Oh shit. Hello. Let's fucking go. We go. Welcome boys. How are we all doing? Very well. well. Very, very, very <laughs> well. I'll take that long. Right. This oh, okay. is the second year of Horror Fest, episode one. Uh, if you're unfamiliar from last time, we do 31 days of horror films for 31 days of October. Pretty simple. We're going to cover every single film. We're going to do seven today. Every film. Every <laughs> single, <laughs> every single oh, film. Every film day. ever. Every film ever. Get ready, boys. Bring out this IMDb. Yeah, you, fucking did... <laughs> you all signed up for this. Um, <laughs> I don't know if we're doing guests in any others, but we're going to try and keep it a bit minimal considering last time went on for about three hours and we were all in a hole at yeah. the end of it yeah my name's alex i was in that hole um, <laughs> deep hole deep hole and since then it's just been mentioned as a vietnam as a cinch, flashback yeah, <laughs> yeah it's... i don't think i've actually left that hole if i'm honest you could well, see I, I got lucky face at the end like, I was <laughs> so fucking like oh my god <laughs> i was lucky because i only joined on the last one didn't i so like i kind of came when i was all like oh this is exciting this is fun whereas <laughs> you guys are like this is like <laughs> this is like the 15th hour we've recorded this month that makes me feel bad because, like, you're buzzed to come on, and then we were like, "Oh no, mate, it was sick." Hey, Ryan. <laughs> we were good. It was Let's cool. get it done. <laughs> Let's get through this. Um, yeah. But right. yeah, I'm, I'm I'm looking forward to being in said hole, you know, in a few Hell weeks' yeah. time. <laughs> it's rather comfortable. I won't lie to you. That's why I've not left. Look at me now. <laughs> gonna get there. There's gonna be little scratches on the wall from Alec uh, from Smith, like yeah, day Smith one. Smith was here. Two K twenty. Oh, I love it. I love it. So I'm going to go over the seven films we're going to cover today. I do not know how long this will go on for, but we'll find out. Right. So the ones we are covering are When a Stranger Calls, released in 1979. Skirmy, which came out last year. Evil Dead 2, uh, 1987. I don't know why I'm giving the dates for everything. I was just laughing at Smith doing little reactions to each one. You know, the first two, and then that, that, that one came off. I, 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 I was evil. whacked out that Evil uh, Dead in one move. Like, uh, yeah. yeah, but like highlighted two, so kind of like. <laughs> These are going to be our Instagram posts promoting <laughs> horror effects. <laughs> just Smith, like, uh, right? Ready or not, twenty nineteen. Are you? Wrong turn, twenty twenty one. Oh shit! I'm lost. <laughs> Life. 2018, I think. Uh, yeah, it was. Any, any movement? No of that reaction. One? <laughs> no, no, already dead. <laughs> 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 and finishing off with the crow, 1994. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't hear that through your microphone. I heard it on real. Oh, okay, oh, oh, here's one for you guests. You see me now. <laughs> oh, is it happening? This is one for the YouTube exclusive. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we got dogs kicking off now. Oh, God. <laughs> Fuck's sake. It's a mess already. Uh, is Smith getting attacked now? <laughs> Who let the dogs out? Who? Who? He made it. Wasn't so <laughs> <long ago. laughs> I'm You've mess. literally just got up, caused a bit of trouble, and now you're back, and Pearson's sorting out the mess. <laughs> <laughs> That has been the past 26 years of my <laughs> life. Not just Pearson sort of mask shit out, but like everyone else. So I just sort of turn up to places, cause havoc and leave, and people go, Smith. And I go, <laughs> You introduce yourself, but hi, I'm Smith. I'm going to be a burden in your life for a short period of time, and then I'll be gone. In a nutshell, that is, do you know, I'm going to start putting that on my Tinder profile. Do it, mate. <laughs> Here to cause you... A short deal amount of time and pain. Also, if you're not looking for long term, you let them know already, you know. Exactly. It's not so there's no no bad points to it, is there? It makes perfect sense. Yeah. Sorry for ruining that there, person. No, so this has already gone fun. to shit. That, <laughs> that was a great intro. With an edit. <laughs> yeah, we'll just take that. Well, that was a great fine. intro. <laughs> so shall we begin, boys? Yes. Yes. Film number Why one. Let's just begin. Not. I don't know the format. We're just going to free ball it and see what we're feeling, who wants to speak up. So yep. first film, When a Strange Calls, released in 1979. Uh, the premise of the movie is a psychopathic killer terrorizes a babysitter, then returns seven years later to menace her. My breath. Breathe. Whew. 
another feeling, man. So if you've obviously if you guys seen it, you know that as as well as Scream, like Scream took a heavy influence from this film, the whole like and Halloween. Well, Halloween didn't take influence from it, but it was Halloween was based in the similar released like, after premise. Halloween. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Halloween, like. You know what I mean? It's, it's the whole uh, it's the whole like babysitter murder sort of thing. Yeah, and yeah. You get the whole like phone call which Scream took influence from and all that sort of thing. Um, and obviously, back in the seventies, there was a lot of like um, this, this like urban legend going around about the babysitting murders, and then you had the Ted Bundy going around killing people, going into people's houses. So when this came out, people were probably like already freaked out because of all that shit that was going on in America. Um, and then yeah, and then you get this fucking thing where there's a guy just hiding upstairs in your house, asking you if uh, have you checked on have the you kids? checked on his children, children, yeah, yeah. Which by the way, we're gonna have spoilers throughout every single. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. We're not gonna hold back at any point. It, we will ruin these films for you. So if you haven't seen <laughs> them, then it's your own stupid fucking fault. Completely I've got agree. A sneeze coming, by the way. <laughs> Let it loose, man. Let it loose. <laughs> Let oh no, it's loose. gone. It's like hovering around. Ah, yeah. they're the worst sneezes I've I know. Ever. <laughs> I have sneeze. So yeah, at some point I'm gonna be talking then to go. Ugh. Um, if you sneeze like that, I'd be concerned. I'm gonna see some. Like <laughs> <laughs> got problems, no. man. So, uh, Matt, you said about uh, the like the the influence on Halloween. Well, not influence on Halloween, it's like so influ- Halloween yeah, called. influence on the scream. Yeah, you know, Halloween was going to be called the Babysitter Murders. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you reckon? I don't know if this is, this could be no knowledge. I've got no idea. But do you reckon like studios knew that both films are kind of being made near enough at the same time? Because I mean, imagine back in the day, it took a bit longer to make films. That when yeah. a stranger calls was probably already in production before Halloween came out and everything. Do you reckon that could be why they changed it from the babysitter murders? Because they were like, oh, there's another film coming out, which is literally that. Possibly. Yeah, I mean, like, obviously, John Carpenter was doing that, like, in that uh, Halloween is sort of like a low budget film. So I don't know if there was a lot of studio involvement, but um, I'm not sure. I'm not sure who actually made When yeah, a Stranger Calls. considered it a yeah. film Halloween, isn't yeah. it? So. Just uh, something that I thought of when I was watching it, because I noticed they were made really close together. Yeah. And obviously. Yeah, yeah. If you were going to give a film the title of the Babysitter Murders, I'd probably put it towards When a Stranger Calls rather than Halloween. Yeah, hundred percent. Yeah, yeah. But um, yeah, I really liked When a Stranger Calls. I liked the. I think one of you guys, I can't remember who, when I said I was going to watch it, said about like the the similarities in Scream or like the influence. So I think I kind of went in looking for that. Yeah. One thing which I think was a huge thing. The like the opening scene where you meet the babysitter and she's getting the phone calls and they have you checked the children. That bit goes on for like 20 minutes. And I thought that was going to be the whole film. You know, I was so like, they're going to drag yeah. just, out just in the house. house. Yeah. yeah. yeah and then so that shot when she like opens the door and it's the police and it all kind of, it like switched. Like, it's so well how they did it, especially back in the day, like opening the door, police are there. And then suddenly what you think is going to pan around to just like the babysitter at the door, like panicking. It's like a few hours later and the incidents have all happened. It's and the crime scene, you know, isn't fucking, it? And detectives yeah, yeah, yeah. Sort of walking around. I thought that was brilliant. And then obviously that's so close to obviously how it was in Scream with Drew Barrymore that, mm. I, I, you know, it was different for us because we watched it, or, or for me, we watched it years after it came out, but isn't it like the marketing made it seem like Drew Barrymore was the main yeah. character of the film and then she was killed off in 10 yeah, minutes. That's exactly and, it. Yeah, that was the genius behind it, that was. Yeah, I thought it was cool. Um, yeah, I, I liked When a Stranger Calls. I thought the open the opening hooked me. It's creepy and it's interesting. Yeah. Uh, and I was shocked how long was left once I got like 20 minutes in, I found the storyline a bit jarring after that of like, cause I, I was left guessing like, all right, it's a, a few years later. Mm. Who is this character? Is this the mom? Is this the dad? You know? Yeah. But you just, I suppose you just got to go through it. And I do feel like it. it is a film of three parts in that the first part was like the most exciting part. Yeah. Then it does slow down a bit. But I think you was waiting for that again, wouldn't you? Like the beginning, yeah. was waiting for that to sort of happen again. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's kind of necessary because obviously it's more of like a character. To, like you're, you're seeing more of the character of you kind of seeing the serial killer type person from another lens because normally you just mm. follow the victim and then the serial killer pops in and out. But I mean, my memory is a bit hazy because I've seen so many films the past couple of weeks, and I watched obviously this one a couple of weeks ago. I swear, like you kind of see him. Hang on, where was I going? Yeah, so you follow Lost Duncan. You, fo- you follow like Duncan. You follow me around like. The yeah. Is, is it the streets of? Is it New York City? I'm, yeah. You I'm don't ahead. really tend yeah. to see much of that in films, like you know, like you also... Halloween. You don't watch Marco Myers on his, you know, on his day <laughs> off. <laughs> <laughs> but you also you don't know if that is the killer. 
at the beginning. Yeah. So you are left guessing, and it is oh, this I thought guy. It was obvious. <laughs> I mean, maybe. I mean, you're better at films than I am, right? No, I just, I just, it. I thought like, wait, do you ever see? So you never see the killer. You don't see the killer in the house at all until he's looking in the mirrors. He's naked in a bathroom, staring at himself, and then you get these flashbacks. Yeah. Um, That's how it always the, starts. The, the flashbacks were like. That's where it picked up pace again for me. That yeah. and the the restaurant scene. So like the only other film that did that, what kind of like followed the serial killer's like thoughts and showed you like the inside of like a mind of a killer was uh, Maniac, I think. Oh, that I don't, was I don't show you that. Ma- Maniac was probably afterwards, if I'm correct. I'm not 100% sure. Was that the one with Elijah Wood or was that the remake of that? No, one? there was, there was the, the OG. I'm not, I'm not too sure what year the OG came out. Yeah, was, I've only seen the Elijah Wood remake, yeah. but it's yeah, bloody good. Yeah. yeah, the Elijah Wood one was absolutely evil. But we're not going to talk about that because that's a no. different film for a different day. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Honestly, sh- after, after doing this list, I looked at him and then I was like, oh, there's so many films I want to add. Why was Have I we struggling? Got- have we got space? No, they're all gone. Okay. Gone. Yeah, because I, uh, I know what you mean. Like, throughout the whole year, I keep thinking of films, and then every time you've been like, right, what are we adding? And I'm like, oh, I can't remember any films. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, to Maniac, it was, was 1980. It was in 1980, Maniac. So a year after. And it was Damn, you had, you had Halloween 1978, When a Strange yeah. Calls 1979, and Maniac yeah. 1980. Yeah. Story-wise, I feel... Uh, I might be a bit brutal here. Um, Let it out. For this to come out after Halloween is shocking story-wise because I feel like the story... This is probably me being biased because it felt slow to me and I'm trying to not shit on a film like I did Bram Stoker's Shit, mate. If you, if you don't like it, shit all over it. That's yeah. what I'm going to do in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> um, Just a heads up. (laughs) The only thing that kept me watching this film other than the, uh, you know, I have to for this fucking podcast was that opening scene. If that opening scene hadn't been as good as it was, I wouldn't have continued. Sure. I can kind of, even though I really liked it, I can exactly see where you're coming from. Because like I said, there was, it it did feel like a film of three parts and the second part, which obviously is the, you know, if a film's, it was an hour and a half long, wasn't it? So it's in three chunks of half an hour. If that second half an hour is dragging, you're going to be like, what the yeah. fuck am I doing? You yeah. know? So I, d- I kind of don't blame you for that. I, I, I wouldn't say I totally agree. Like, I, but yeah, I felt it. And then it picked up at the end. It Otherwise, is, I was yeah. prepared. I was literally preparing my kind of notes to be great start to the film. Then it got fucking boring. But I think, <laughs> so it, I ma- just, I think it made up for it at the end. I just checked my notes. So like, to, to give an example, it, like for people who've never watched this, you have this amazing 20 minute opening scene that we've just discussed. And then it jumps a few years in seven years in the future. Um, and you don't see the babysitter again until one hour and 17 minutes in. Yeah, so it's literally. Oh, yeah, he follows another yeah. woman, doesn't yeah, he? Yeah, 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 completely yeah. different woman that I forgot all I'm, about that. I'm left <laughs> guessing of like, all right, is this the mum of the kids? And he's trying to taunt her. Uh, you have no idea who this woman is. Yeah. I still don't know who the woman is, and I finished the film. <laughs> <laughs> I think he's. I think it's just to show that this guy is like fucking deluded. Yeah. That like, yeah. you know, we d- we don't see the backstory of the girl from the beginning, so we don't know how long he's followed her to the point of getting up to making the phone yeah. calls, and maybe we're just seeing him do it again, but the start of it. So like, imagine like he's followed two women in like you know I don't know what kind of time period is on. He goes through a phase of like you know bumping into this person, having some kind of psychotic way of picking, this is going to be my next victim, stalking them a bit, finding out what they're doing, getting a fucking phone number to call them and terrorize them that way. And then the next one, doesn't he like, it starts off, he just tries to buy her a drink in the bar or something. Yeah, that's yeah, exactly yeah. it. So it's, it could just be that that's the start the of it. And, you know, but yeah, yeah it was kind of a bit like, wait, is this the babysitter? Is this any relation to the woman from the beginning? And then you kind of see her at the end. Yeah with her new kids and I mean, it's all coming back to me now. You know, yeah. I said, I've kind of forgot because I watched it two weeks ago. It's all coming back. I can't remember the restaurant scene now. And I remember that was that when I kind of got- scene, I was- I was like, fuck, I'm back on this Bro, now. This yeah. is good. 
it's just it just remains suspenseful. I think, uh, it's, like you said, it picked it up towards the end. But the the part that got me is is where they say like, "Is inside your house?" Where they're trying to trace the call. Yes, like, yeah. he's, he's actually inside so, the house, and you're like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> that's a famous line, isn't it, in horror movies? The calls yeah. coming from inside the house. Yeah, it's actually in Black Christmas as well. That's where it first came from. Oh wow, oh, which was yeah, released yeah. before this. Yeah, yeah. I had a bit of a nice kind of, I say nice, a bit of a nostalgia moment watching this because I remember my mum growing up, um, she always used to get like, um, she would be, what's the, how would you say babysitted? Babysitted? Babysat? Babysat. 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 <laughs> yeah. Um, by like, uh, you know, older members of our family and stuff. So I always heard stories that they'd always make my mum watch horror films. And now my mum won't watch anything because she's just shit scared of everything. She is terrified of Freddy Krueger, right? we could get right? her on an episode of Horror Fest. She, don't even want, she doesn't even <laughs> want to talk about it, which is funny considering I came <laughs> I home with a bloody horror year. sleeve. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, my own child. My own child. <laughs> yeah. Oh, mate. <laughs> She Taken was by Freddy. She was like <laughs> so. Con- she was so worried that I'd get a Freddy tattoo because she hates Freddy so much. Just was- your entire back. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> what, no, you I think. Stop, bitch. I think I made that joke when my arm was finished. I said, "Yeah, don't worry. I'm not getting Freddy on the arm. He's going to be the chest piece." <laughs> <laughs> I should. I say you should one up. I say you should one up. Get his finger. You know, get the uh, the 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 the, the, the yeah. nice gloves on the back of your head or something. Ooh, so, I do ooh. I do need something on the back of my head because hey, you know that I'll, is a good I'll do tattoo. Something. Yeah. <laughs> and you'll um, never see it and it'll always scare her. Yeah. That but yeah, always get, going it. back to why I, I brought my mum up in a in a horror podcast. <laughs> um, <laughs> I remember her I remember her talking about this film and like I've I kind of always forgot it until he said that line, have you checked the children? I was like shit, I remember my mum telling me about this. And uh, it was just a nice moment. Like yeah pointless story really no one else knows my mum so (laughs) (laughs) well so Matty picked this film so what made you think it should be in this list Um, not that we have some precious list we just chuck a bunch of films together but go on (laughs) again it's just one of those like cult films it's one of those that like I hadn't watched in a while and then when when I saw it not long back again I was like oh fuck like you could tell the amount of influence that other films have took from it again, like Scream, yeah. Scream is one of my like favorite films. So, yeah, that you just had to be on the list because of that, and again because of the memorable quotes in it as well. Everybody knows it because of that. So, yeah, um, I haven't told everyone, but we're going to rate these films out of five. Cool. Um, but... Oh, I'm going to get my letterbox up because I can't so, remember what I gave it. Shit. Before Fine. we do, uh, and before we jump on the next film. I've got a fun fact, as I do with most of these. Um, so the phone number of the house that Carol is babysitting, or her character Jill. Carol Baskin. Five 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 two three six eight. That's also the same phone number used by Jamie in Jamie Lee Curtis's house in the film Forever Young. It's also used in Close Encounters of the Third Kind, and it's oh, also shit. the phone number for Ghostbusters. What was the number again? Five 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 five. Damn, Rain Man over here. Two three six eight. That number again. I guess five, it's five, just five, like two, three, six, eight. If you think of the movement, it's just quite an easy movement, then, isn't it? Like five, 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 yeah, two, it's... three, six, eight. See what you mean. Uh, yeah. So I don't. I don't know if there's any kind of actual relation to that number. I think it's just a maybe a movement thing. I mean, it could just be a reference, but it's it's a nice little fun fact that now people know. Yeah, love a fun fact. Um, uh, Matt, are you getting your phone out just to check it. I'll just see, okay, so I recognize it from something <laughs> else. I mean, it's like, it's, yeah. it's, 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 it's Pearson has said it, like, this really reminds me of another film. I'm just trying to think what else it is. I was trying to pre- think of it as like, uh, you know, you know, when you text people and you like, you, you, you click back a day, you click 555 just to get JKL. I was <laughs> yeah. thinking if it made like a oh, fucking word yeah. or something, but it doesn't. Oh, yeah. Uh, but I was really intently that thinking. That would be then, cool. And I was going L2. Well, wasn't it like um, American <laughs> phone numbers that. used this 555 opening because it could never be anyone in the United States' phone number and it just became like an agreed upon thing? I Google. thought signal shit. Maybe. I thought because it gets used all the time, I legit thought 555 was the start of their phone numbers. I mean, it might be. I could be wrong, but I feel mm. like area codes would change only how big phone Yeah, yeah, yeah true. Is. Oh, yeah, because um, that only leaves you with four numbers. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, so I what was your uh, what was your rating out of five then, Pearson? 
do you know what? I've not written one down, but it's a 2.5 out of five. Yeah. I respect hmm. it because of the influence it's given. It it picks, it's almost like it, it's up at the beginning, comes down and goes back up and drops down again. So your classic roller coaster shape. So I, I probably wouldn't watch it again though. So yeah. I mean, I struggle with ratings. How how should I rate it? Because I won't watch it again. So it can't get above a three, can it? No. Yeah, no, I'd agree. Like yeah. I always do mine. Like if it's at a five, a two point five is mid. It's like mm. it's kind of not good, but it's not bad. It's like you said, you appreciate it. Yeah. Anything over two point five, that's when you start to get into the, the positive side. Like if you think of it of a fifty percent scale kind of thing, when yeah, you start yeah. to get closer to the, the good side. So I always do that. Like I remember the amount of times I've given a film a three. I've been like, oh, this film's good. Three out of five. And people are like, what? If it's good, how are you only giving it a three? And I'm like, because if you give everything a fucking five out of five, how do you know? All of a sudden, five mm. means nothing. Yeah, mm. exactly. So so what did you give it, Ryan? Well, I gave it, I'm gonna, I'll read out my little uh, letterbox review. I gave it three and a half. Uh, so I put, it's a slow paced, tense horror. I was fully not expecting the film to go the way it did within the first 20, 25 minutes. And that's a good thing. Like that was really impressive. Uh, so it did go a bit slow in the middle. Um, once, oh, hang on, I made a little typo there. It's once we return with Jill Johnson's character, so that was the name of the babysitter, yeah. uh, that it gets exciting again. Uh, the scene in the restaurant was excruciating to watch. The sounds of the screams were truly frightening. Forgot to mention that. The sounds Damn. of the, of like the voice on the phone, I thought was brilliant. And her just screaming is so like, that's what I love about old horrors, like The Exorcist. You could, I just listened to that and it's like pure fucking, it's just sick. It's so good. Like the way it's recorded. Um, so yeah, three out of five. Fair days. Who who next? I'll take a stab. Uh, yeah, I'll give it. I'm. I was pretty bland with it to be honest. I'm. I like my horror films to actually shock me, scare me, give me some form of fucking fright. And this was just sort of. It wasn't a bad film as we said. It was just kind of bog standard for me. So I'm. I'm it prob- probably a piss poor rating to be fair. But two out of five, I'll give it overall. Um, it is again, slow paced, and I feel yeah. like. Yeah. Seen it once, don't need to see it again. Yeah, that's fair. Got the premise now. Thanks for your time. Also, <laughs> just wanted to point out, films like this are the reason why people have call blockers on their phone now. <laughs> uh, so it makes perfect sense. And uh, I just want to say, I'm a bit annoyed for that reason, because it's so much fun <laughs> prank calling people. But now we've got to go for a fucking telephone preference service because of fucking strangers calling people and fucking babysitters and ruining kids' fucking lives. Babysitters. Fucking can babysitters? Can we talk about what does Smith this light going on at the minute? Yeah, because Smith. every time he speaks, it's yeah. like a horror film flash. I'm like kind of, <laughs> I am liking it. I'm just watching him like this is entertaining. We should give a epileptic trigger warning at the beginning. Uh, oh, sorry, right, never time up. Every time I look at you, right now, I've kept my, my eyes keep peering to the right and I keep seeing Stitch in the corner. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Stitch on my bed. <laughs> my little yeah, man. These lights are really flashing. Nuts, yeah, aren't I, it? I, Every I, time I speak, as well, it's like. <laughs> Pop, it's pop. cool, like because we're doing a horror thing. It does look like you're doing the thing. Yeah. We get the torch oh, and you like oh, gather around, kids. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> look at that! That looks sick. <laughs> <laughs> Do we put the big light on? Do you want me to put the big light on? Pop, pop, big light on. Put big light on. Put big lights on. As us northerners say. Hey, whoa, Never. whoa, whoa! There's, there's, there's only three northerners here. Thank you. Oh wow! Hey, what are you? Let's I'm kick him out of this house, eh? <laughs> you sound northern. I'm Brizzle born and bredler. No, you're not. I, I fucking am. I've got a fucking birth certificate that proves it. it is. I did it notice is. a minute ago when you said scare me, you actually said scare me, not scare me. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mate, I, I genuinely am from Bristol. Or Clevedon, <laughs> to be precise. I know. We, we, we've we spoke about it before, but you do sound very northern now. I have looked at here most of my life, though, to be fair, and I've been surrounded by these fucking yeah. kids. Do you know what I mean? So. Sorry about Well, that. I'm coming up there soon. <laughs> give it give it a few years. And I'll be off. <laughs> You're I'll be off. Ryan, is it going down here? All right, pal. Is it going like? It's all uh, good Up here. north, this is how we do things. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Practice. Okay, we'll get you that. We'll get you that. I'm Ryder. This is Silver Screen on the scene. <laughs> Silver Screen on the scene. Can't wait till we're hanging out and be like, uh, do you want to watch Skirmy? Skirmy. That, that film was a bit scurvy, lads. <laughs> Not a bit scared. <laughs> oh. um, Enough of colloquialisms. 
Yeah, moving on. Lun, Ashton, yeah. what are you fucking ready Let's go to Lun on? first because Matty chose. All right. So I'm going to put my hands up on this one. We have not seen this film. Ooh. However, however, so I didn't zone out for 20 minutes whilst we were having this first film. I thought I'd have a quick read of it. Now, with the whole that the first act of the 20 minutes, the first 20 minutes, I feel like the entire like advertising for that film back then was purely based on the first 20 minutes. So when I read like through the actual storyline and synopsis, yeah. and they said it went past that, I was like, whoa, didn't see that coming. I thought it was going to be like some cat and mouse thing through the house because he was inside the house yeah. and it completely threw me off on that. So I think based on what Ryan said and just that like, you mentioned the restaurant scene and stuff like that, I think I would actually watch this. I definitely recommend watching it. Like you guys have said, you wouldn't watch it again. I would watch it again. I wouldn't rush out to see it. But if there's someone that I think might appreciate it, I'd happily sit down with them and be like, let's watch this film. It's good to watch every so often. Like it's one of those films that it's good to revisit maybe. Like, revisit once in a blue moon type of deal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Plus yeah. as well, like to this day, it's still being mentioned for reference. Like for yeah. example, yeah. Fair Street, when they've talked about the making of the reference, When a Stranger Calls and I Then Scream. Know. Hmm. the more you know i mean i'd probably put it on again but i wouldn't be giving it as much attention as i did i respect the film for what it's done um but yeah it's, it's nice to hear that you would want to watch it after hearing what we spoke about yeah totally. um, we right, have well, effectively sold this film to you yeah, look at that <laughs> Hey, listeners! If even you though we've spoiled it, it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we ruined it. Oh, mate! This watch is, it anyway. <laughs> this is Lun. Lun is king this of is spoilers. The thing. Uh, yeah, 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 great. Yeah, fuck me. Yeah. yeah, reads up on everything before he fucking watches it in the first place. You fact, what were we tell you watch it for? You already admitted that you just read up right now. What's the point? What's the fucking point? I don't do as much though. However, when I have, I've been like, well, I kind of want to see how this plays out. Like. Instead of like just reading about it, just be like, well, <laughs> actually just... like to see the cinema behind it. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> oh, I can appreciate that spoiler. <laughs> oh, my You're God. fucking backwards, mate. <laughs> so, so, what what rating did you say then, Lord? I can't give well, it a rating. I can't give it a rating. You haven't seen it. Um, <laughs> a, a potential Matt... three. <laughs> <laughs> a potential three. <laughs> um, Matt, yeah, mine's just mine's going to be a four. Like, nice. obviously, it's not a bit biased, but yeah, four. It's going to be hard because there's so many good, like, good films on here that I'm going to be like, oh, is it going to be four or is it going to be a 0. 0.5? Or you can do 0. Yeah, 0.5. I think last hard. year was a mess because we did out of 10, and that was yeah. like 7.3 for some reason. <laughs> yeah. and I was like, ah, oh. 6.74 and a exclamation mark. Uh. <laughs> yeah, we'll stick to letterbox out of five stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, okay. you can do point fives. Yeah. Right, I'm just going to run, uh, get a tissue a sec if we're going on to film Not two. Okay, right. Film number two on this list is Skirmy, released in 2020. Uh, <laughs> what? What? Escape. Sorry, what film? <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Fuck off. <laughs> hey, do you want to intro this one? <laughs> Paranoid. Worth it, man. Right. The second film on this list is Skirmy. Is that just as bad? I feel like it no, is. No, that was better. That was better. Fuck. Scare um, me. Scare me. In fact, Scare I'll Scare mind, me. I will Scare mind me. the word. Ryan, you just say it. Right, ready? <laughs> the second film on this list is Scare Me. <laughs> Released in 2020. <laughs> During a okay, power no. outage, two strangers tell scary stories. The more Fred and Fanny commit to their tales, the more the stories come to life. The horror of reality finally manifests when Fred confronts his ultimate fear. I just want to be the kid Thanks, who man. pointed out that Matty Lunn almost laughed at the word fanny. <laughs> yeah, so did I. And had to take a sip of his drink to hide it. <laughs> yep. Uh, Grow up. Please, <laughs> 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 you, you, you defend yourself because you heard <laughs> fanny and went, 
I completely forgot that like, she's so funny in the film. <laughs> so it's just like, Jeez, what? Dude. Oh, shit. Oh, man. It just I sounds just so... want to point out there was a children's book back in the day that I swear, right, had the names, the character, the name, main character name titles were Fanny and Dick. Don't know Never why that they thought that was appropriate for a children's book, but very inappropriate. I think the reason, the reason I was nearly laughing is because we had the, uh, we were laughing at how you guys say scare me, but then <laughs> It just doesn't. I, I, for, I forgot their names as well. And saying Fred and Fanny it, together, it just doesn't sound real. It flows quite nicely, I'll be honest. <laughs> Fred and Fanny. It, it's oh, it's like a dessert, dish. doesn't it? Bread and butter. <laughs> no, mate, I'll have some Fred and Fanny, please. Fred Thank and you. Fanny. <laughs> it's like some spotted dick or some Fred and Fanny. <laughs> no, but have you got any Fred and Fanny? Yeah, nice one. Nice one. Thank you. Yeah. Do you oh, come with oh. cheese, that? Yeah, right. Ameri- oh, I'm guessing no. Americans don't really know <laughs> Fanny is a name for a vagina. Vagina. Give it a, give it a, give it a pussy balls. Pussy. <laughs> also, which probably said the oh. reason I keep laughing when they say skirmy, it was uh, when you, I think it was the soft cult episode when you were chatting to, chatting to the <laughs> band and you were talking about films and you were like, yeah, have you seen Skirmy? And they were just like, <laughs> what? <laughs> Skirbies. Skirmy. Skirmy? Skirmy. I think right. it only really comes to life how northern the accent is until we're speaking to someone from Canada or America. Yeah. Not mm. even that. Fucking Birmingham. I remember meeting my play this show fucking eight years ago. And we started speaking to him and he stops and just went, what? <laughs> Right, this who's taking film. it away? Yeah, we go. <laughs> we all know really well um, because we've all watched it together. Yes, we did. Um, and and you guys Josh spoke Ruben. to the director. Yeah, we did. Episode forty-three has the director of this film talking specifically about this. Um, yeah, what do we all think? Did we watch it a second time, or did we just write notes from what we know? I t- did not have time to watch it again, but I did want to. Because uh, the last I saw it in December, um, and I remember it. Bit, it was an interesting one because I didn't know anything about it beforehand, so I didn't know it was all going to be in the one location type thing. So it kind of felt like for a while I was waiting for it to like really kick off, and then you're kind of like, oh, hang on a minute, like this is the film, yeah, uh, which is great. Oh, pardon me. Um, sorry, burping for my peronies. Um, yeah, which is great. No, no kind of dis, no hatred on that. It just kind of then I was like, okay, right, I need to catch up and like, because he's, he's obviously, it's like storytelling, isn't it? He's telling a story. Yeah. Oh, sorry. <laughs> so gassy. But I didn't my first beer, mate. You all right? Yeah, <laughs> well, I'm on number two, mate. It's going to uh, gonna get hectic tonight. Um, Skull it. But, but like, the, what, what, the one thing I really liked is uh, the build up of Fanny's character. <laughs> oh, <laughs> okay, wow. Now, boys. We had children. Because. <laughs> When you're introduced to her and you don't know, like, if you don't know the premise of the film or what is going to kind of be, she's so confident as a character that it kind of puts, throws you off and thinking, right, what's going to go on here? Because he's the kind of the quiet, reserved type. Yeah. It almost feels like someone's going to attack him. And if it's going to be anyone, it's going to be the person who's so chirpy and loud and obviously shows up at his house and invites herself in and kind of like takes over the place sort of thing. Uh, so I thought that was a really interesting dynamic that for a while I didn't know who to trust because I felt like they were really making us not trust the female character. But then that also leaves you thinking, oh, hang on a minute. They're kind of going so much towards this. Maybe it's him that we've got to worry about. I just kind of felt like the whole time they were telling stories, I was just expecting at some point for them to just fucking pull out a real axe and just fucking chop one up. <laughs> yeah, well, so, I think one thing I didn't mention in the synopsis is Fanny is a very accomplished writer no, and had huge success in her recent novel. And Fred is the aspiring, uh, you know, writer. And he's completely emasculated by Fanny and her confidence in the film. And that's something Josh Rubin went into heavily on episode 43 of an AFL podcast. <laughs> um, that's the last time I'm going to do that, but. Yeah, that's something we probably didn't mention. And they're like trapped in this cabin due to, is it a power outlet? Power outage, yeah. Yeah, that's right. 
Yeah, I think both characters really do throughout the whole film. Uh, both of them, which is clever, really, uh, lo they lull you uh, into a false sense of security within both of them. As Ryan said beautifully there, you don't know which one to trust. And then yeah. you start, once you start leaning towards one, because of horror and movie knowledge within the back of your old brain, you start thinking, wait, if I'm going over this side, then surely something's about to happen over here. And you start battling with yourself. And it's like, it, it like unintentionally creates the tension for you. Yeah. Which is very clever. Yeah. They don't like they don't have to create that much for it for you to then build it up within your own head. They get the 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 watcher to start thinking way over time before they've even given you half the premise, which is very clever. I like that. But you don't know what to expect at first when you go into it. But like like as you say, then you get you get both and you don't know which one's gonna be like probably the killer or whatever. And it gives off really like heavy misery vibes, is it? <sighs> Yes. Um, oh, nice! I didn't yeah. even notice that shirt. Um, I noticed it a, a bit a while ago. I wasn't sure if it was like a band shirt or something. Yeah, so so it gives off that sort of misery vibes. Obviously, they're trapped in the middle of nowhere, boy and girl sort of vibes. And then, like, like you said, the whole the whole thing where you don't know, like, because yeah, in misery, obviously, it's the woman that's acting all chirpy and like you know, what I mean, it's almost switched, isn't it? Yeah, it's like, yeah. Sort of yeah. In misery, Kathy Bates is obsessing over this writer. Yeah. And now in this, it is Josh Rubin obsessing over Aya Cash's character. Yeah. And you know what else I sort of picked up on as well? I don't know if it's just me going way deep into it, but like I feel like he must have took part influence as well, obviously from Stephen King, because I know like back in the period when Stephen King was writing it and that it was fully into all these drugs and they were, it was coming up with all these <laughs> horror stories and that. In this film, they're doing all sorts of different drugs and they're coming up with these horror films and also they're just mm. sat in the middle of fucking nowhere as well, so... Damn, yeah. Yeah. It's cool little things like that. Can we talk about how fucking catchy that song is, like, in this in the film? Sing Which one was that? Which one? Where it's, so it's um, the scene where it's the woman who sells her soul to, like, win this competition or sing better. And then, so it's like a funk thing halfway through the film. Oh, fuck. Yeah, so it's, it's, it's weird, isn't it? Because in these stories... The the almost stuff that I was scared of doing if I when I ever played D and D the like three times I tried it, it was like doing a voice and being a character itself and acting it out they fully commit to the mm. the stories and you have this like amazing shadow work up against the camera oh, yeah. telling the story and then this sound design so it's it's almost like uh, the one that sticks in my mind is I think they're describing a wolf. Yeah. yeah, and well, you start yeah. hearing growling and these footsteps and the yeah. shadow taking over, and that sells the story even more because, like, going to a friend, like, oh, you should watch this film. They tell stories to one another. It's great. It, it's hard to convey how good and well executed yeah. it is. Um, <clears throat> it's definitely more comedic than horror, in my opinion. Yeah. Oh yeah. Um, but I think we're seeing that a lot more with common horror films now anyways it's yeah. like it's what you to want juxtapose to. what you're seeing maybe because yeah, i think like a lot of the time and especially with the horror films nowadays everything's kind of if, if they're going serious they go serious so i feel like it's to add to the rhetoric of it all it's like listen man like this is a horror film but don't take it as seriously as you should be because it doesn't need to be taken that seriously just enjoy it for what it is yeah. yeah, I feel like I, I agree. There is a lot of comedy coming into horror. I mean, I, I suppose it kind of always has been, but it just do, does feel there's a new wave of it. Yeah, and I'm not the biggest fan of it because sometimes when I go to a horror film, I want like a proper serious thing that's going to get me thinking. Mm. But sometimes it is necessary. And I think for this one, it was perfect. It yeah, yeah. Uh, I think we mentioned it last year when we were talking about the Halloween uh, 2018. You know, the little kid. Mate, highlight of the film. <laughs> Here I am clipping my nasty ass toenails. Yeah. <laughs> he's just like, he's fucking brilliant. But sometimes I don't like when there's comedy. And I don't, do you know what? I don't even know how to explain when I want it and when I don't. It's just sometimes I'm like, it works. Sometimes it doesn't. Mate, I completely for agree. this, mm. for this, it totally mm. worked. Like, it's almost weird thinking of this as a horror film because it was just like, it was almost like watching a play because obviously it's all in one room. Yeah. yeah. Which, it's almost like a play made for horror fans, but not necessarily a horror. But there was obviously so much elements of horror, which is why, you know, Shudder picked it up and why, you know, it resonates so much with us and we enjoyed it. But it still doesn't quite feel like a horror film. 
It's a shout that Ryan, you know, I'd actually love to see it like being turned into like a, a theatrical like adaption and see yeah. like the like yeah, West well. no, that'd be fucking awesome. Almost like it's paying homage in a way, isn't it? Yeah. Well, like I said horror- that the whole references to different horror films throughout is like there's so many going into it as a horror fan, and if you, obviously if you're big into that horror, you know all these different references in it, you're gonna love it even more. Um, what well, one thing yeah. I noticed when I cause again I watched the trailer just to have a recap because it's been a while since I've seen it. The the story he's writing is a werewolf story, and then Josh Rubin's next film, which I've not seen yet, Werewolves Within. Yeah. yeah. So that, that's got to be connected. Like, that can't be a coincidence. Well, I know th- the next film's based off a of video game. So it, it could be that, or it might be something entirely different. But he's definitely a fan of werewolves. This, yeah. is, the, this, this, this is the Ruben universe making its uh, yes. <laughs> creating have you, itself. Have man. you guys seen Werewolves <laughs> Within? We don't have not to have a quick yet. chat about it, but I just don't know if any of you have seen it. Not it's as of yet. Not been no, released it's on yet. list. You can get it on DVD on Prime. Yet. Okay. Oh, okay. Right. There you go. Ooh. We'll have so to get we're on having that. a watch party. Yeah. 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 I mean, we did it for Josh's film last year. That's right. Yeah. I call him Josh. Yeah. My mate my Josh. Josh. We my made Josh. We cool. So, like, <laughs> speaking of which, okay, no. but not to get onto the ratings immediately, but I gave this a rating. And then after chatting to Josh, I am biased because. I went back into Letterbox and because we were following one another, I was like, change, change the rating, change the rating, <laughs> put it up a bit more. <laughs> so I'm going to be honest on this one. <laughs> I'm sorry, Josh. <laughs> I think it's worth pointing out with this film, like both Aya Cash and Josh Rubin's character, like in terms of performance throughout the entire film, they're so good in terms of the way that they tell the story about like you fucking Devin the Troll. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And the story of... Um, the creepy granddad and like yeah granddaughter who poisons the dog and then the dog comes back oh, and all shit, that yeah oh, that i remember that so story good. actually being a bit like that one got a bit under your skin a bit i thought like mm. i remember not quite expecting Down that here. one, the Glen, one itch a little bit, didn't it? <laughs> yeah <laughs> i think that's intentional though because aya cash was telling that story and you know she's compared to them both a better storyteller at the moment more experienced so mm. There's a bit of that playing out as well, isn't there? Yeah. Where he's feeling like, oh shit, that's fucking, that's a good story. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I forgot about those little cutaways when like they'll be deep into a story and then they kind of, you get the other person's reaction. I love yeah. that. <laughs> oh, this has made me really want to watch it again. I might watch it after we do this. And then you, you get the other guy from, uh, was he was he from the Comedy Central or something like that? I forgot what his name is. The other oh, actor. yeah. The uh, pizza guy uh, Chris Red. delivers pizza. Yeah, yeah Chris yeah. Red. Oh, dude. Oh, so when, he, when he steps in it as well, he adds that extra, like, fucking flavor to it as well. <laughs> yeah, <doesn't> yeah. It? <laughs> it's because it's like the order pizza. He yeah. should leave at that point. <laughs> then it cuts to, like, sat He's on the couch good. waiting for Josh's story. It's so good. <laughs> That's when you know you've got a fucking good story. When your yeah. fucking pizza bloke turns up and then he's on the couch <laughs> yeah. eating a pizza he's just delivered with you. That's it. Do you know what I mean? That's when you know you've got something worth saying. <laughs> that or when we were teenagers and we all we knew all the people that worked at Domino's. So I remember <laughs> one time <laughs> one time my mate's sister was like, James, why have you invited the, the Domino's man into the into the garage to smoke a joint? <laughs> <laughs> well, but you know the bloke, it's all right. Don't yeah. worry about that. <laughs> absolutely oh, magical oh. love it oh right let's jump to rating this unless anyone's got any other points they want to add oh well, it's the twist at the end not mentioned I mean, the Shyamalan twist. twist yeah That's a very good point Matty do you want to tell them yeah it's basically just it <laughs> right. no. just, just turns into a, <laughs> no, I'm good. Just, you do it. it just turns into Jack, Jack Torrance basically towards the end on it um and then I don't want to spoil it, although I'd rather someone watch it than, than me spoil the ending. And you've said enough. I've, for- yeah. I've they forgotten don't get the that ending. reference, yeah. you have said enough. Yeah. I've forgotten the ending and I want to watch it again now. So I feel like uh, I might zone out for a minute. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I had a question regarding the ending. This is only because I've been thinking about it. Okay. Um, so are you going to go into detail on this ending? Don't worry, we'll wait. 
Oh, it's me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Are you yes. saying into detail? You're in the same <laughs> conversation, man. No, I think because Matty was explaining it. Yeah. So I said, no, I, I'm, I'm asking you. And you went off. I'm asking you. Are you going to So, go no, it's it's just okay. something. It's just. But no, the spoilers I've read are. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I've watched it, so it's fine. Here's the synopsis. <laughs> um, go on, mate. So, Fred, at the end of the film, was he playing around having a laugh and it was just a joke that was taken too far or did he just kind of snap? I think that's left to interpretation. I think that's left as, did he start off as just joking around and then did the storytelling progressively make him play into oh, the wait, Just in reference to the last part of the film, so we, where he finally reads like Fanny's book and all the notes and stuff like that. Um... Because right at the end, before everything wraps up, mm-hmm. he after he falls down the stairs, I'm not going to go into any more detail other than mm-hmm. that. He, he kind of just goes like, uh, I, was, I was just having a laugh. Yeah. And I'm like, well, did he, did he snap? Or was it just him taking it a bit too far? I think, uh, you know, Josh talked a lot of... Uh... And overstepping the boundaries and stuff when we spoke to him, and you know, fucking men assuming shit. Mm. So I think it is his character assuming he's better than him because he sees a woman and feels emascul- emasculated about mm. her being more successful than him in a career that he wants, and he feels privileged to get that. Um. So I think it's it's fully intentional. I don't think he is joking around. Like a game of one-ups, isn't it? You know how yeah. someone like one-ups you and then you just feel like you need to one-up them. Then it gets to a point where it's just of maliciousness because you feel like you need to one-up them just because they one-upped you. Yeah. I, I think be... Josh specifically spoke about that and was focusing on it and we went in a lot of detail on it. That I think you can't put that in and it not be intentional. Yeah. Maybe listen to the episode again. I don't know. Which episode was it again, Pearson? Episode 43. Oh, look at that. Let's go. (laughs) Link down below, or if if we do our job on YouTube, it'll be in that corner. (laughs) Pow, 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 pow. (laughs) Right. Subscribe. (laughs) Subscribe. (laughs) Leave a comment down below. Um, Right. Ratings. Ratings. Who added this, by the way? Was it was it you, me. Or? Okay. So we'll get so, your rating first or last. Would you I'll, go, I'll go first. Nice. Since I've already opened my trap, I'll, I'll, I might as well start. <laughs> so. Go on, mate. All right. So I'm going to give this a four out of five because it kind of played with that in, with it being marketed as a horror film with like some jokes in it. I didn't really know what to expect from it and where they kind of played around with the idea of just actually your imagination running wild rather than actually showing you something. I feel like we were just really creative. And just in terms of like the flow of, of the film, it's not too long, it's not too short, yeah. and it just wraps yeah, up nicely a, and it good. has a solid message to it. Mm. Yeah. Pretty sweet. Four or five. Four or five. Uh, oh, mighty. Awesome. Yeah. No, no, go on, Matty. Matty, actually. Uh, I'm going to give this a... Uh, what should we go? Yeah, I'm going to give, give this another four, to be honest with you, again, because of uh, the orig- originality of it as well. I mean, it kind of did it sort of remind me of um, an anthology sort of thing, a bit like Creep Show, with it, with the sort of vibes it get off, you know, with the different stories and that. But the sure. fact that they could pull this whole thing off in just inside a cabin and throw in all that those like horror references for everyone else as well at the same time, then, yeah, yeah I fucking loved it. And Josh, he's a sound dude, so, <laughs> so yeah, good score. So. Extra star. Extra star. <laughs> Extra star. Well, that's exactly what I did on the uh, Letterboxd. I uh, I gave it a four. I was like, oh, Josh is a cool dude. Give it a five. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> I, I would now, looking at it, also give it a four. I think us three might be biased here. Um, because... Like Ryan said, I do feel it's it's more comedy than I was maybe wanting. It's more comedy than horror. Mm. Uh, but again, all the references and stuff make me like it even more. So that's what brings it back from being a comedy. Yeah. I 
I think that looks, that's, what, that's what takes the comedic effect away is the fact that there's so much horror elements within it. Is, oh yeah, sort of... don't get me wrong. I don't think the comedy was bad in this sense. I just think it, I think that this is sort of film, which I think will only be very well received by horror fans even though it's not a horror. Whereas if someone, yeah. like just before we start recording this, someone messaged me for a horror recommendation, I don't think I'd be like, scare me. Because if you look for a horror recommendation, you no, probably yeah. want something scary. Whereas yeah, yeah. we're just like, we're so into horror, like that when we started here, like I remember hearing how well received this film was, you guys spoke to Josh Rubin. So I was like, I better, you know, check this film out. And, you know, it is great. Um, God, it will be a good introduction to horror for kids as well. Like... Yeah, yeah I the, think I, I can see that. that. Apart from maybe the drug drug part, but you know what I mean. But yeah, it would be. Uh, yeah, it would be a good. Yeah, like when you're young and you want to start. But then again, I also I'm think it horror, won't yeah. be as well received unless you're already into horror. That's the only thing. Mm. Yeah. 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 It's the old catch twenty two situation there. Yeah. But, then but I can see what you mean. I can films. see what you're saying. Does it become one of those films that we go back to now that they are horror fans and it's like? Yeah, oh, I think shit, so. I missed. All yeah. this, I think and so. I think kids can watch it because unless they know a dealer, you shout out anyway. So <laughs> a dealer, oh uh, yeah, yeah, for, for the drugs. <laughs> oh, mate, did you hear that fucking penny drop then? <laughs> a dealer. A dealer. Uh, oh. Okay, Rayton Smith, and then uh, we'll go I, to Ryan. I'll give it a nice, uh, a nice. Uh, yeah, you know, yeah. I'll oh, fuck it. I'm gonna give it a nice four as well. To be honest. Damn. Was, okay. Um, it was. It was refreshing in, re- in, in, in in all honesty, especially for myself. And I say that with love because anyone who knows me knows that I love a fucking gore fest. I want something. I, I want fucking blood, guts, gore. And I want, I want suffering me when I watch a horror film. I want that. <laughs> as, soon as, as soon as it starts, I want someone to fucking die in gruesome ways. And it's just because I'm a horrible person. Uh, so this was an incredibly refreshing story for me and I thoroughly enjoyed it, which is very surprising considering what I tend to watch. Uh, but no, from start to finish, it actually kept me fully invested. Uh, and I, I would actually happily recommend that to plenty of people who have watched horror films already. I wouldn't necessarily throw it at someone who's ne- uh, new to horror films or anything like that, only because I don't think it would be appreciated as much as the likes of us who are watching horror films yeah. uh, as, yeah. as we do nowadays. So yeah, four, four out of five. Perfect. Nice. I'm also going to give it a four. Ooh. I was go- I was going to go all around. I was going to go a bit lower. I was going to go a bit lower, but only you because no, no, it's only because <laughs> I can't quite remember everything because I've watched so many films since because I watched it back in December. But like from talking about it, it's reminding me of what I liked about it. And like I remember, I so I watched it with a friend of the podcast, Katie from Just a Girl. Uh, but I remember watching it with her. She loved it. I remember at the time we were both a bit like kind of taken back by like how much like what we like that we really enjoyed. not not shocked we enjoyed it but it was a bit like that was different yeah. and really like, good fucking hell um, those those boys from an Full podcast might have some taste in horror films. yeah <laughs> <laughs> we'll give them a go <laughs> yeah debatably <laughs> so yeah i'm gonna give it a four um nice. and i'm gonna watch it i think depending how long how late we go tonight because i have got to get up early tomorrow to go to newcastle which will be fun um, oh, I'm you're fucking tonight. spending time with the Jordies, mate. I bloody am. Only one night. Only one night. One, other one, one night only. One night <laughs> only. <laughs> Don't forget, just dial 555 I'm going to go on Tinder Gold and change my location to Newcastle now. Start <laughs> swiping so that when I get there, I'm already ahead of the game. Do you want a, do you want a secret Tinder hack? What's that? Swipe oh right on everything. No, 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 that doesn't work. That doesn't work. Coward. <laughs> Moving quickly <laughs> on. <laughs> four, out, four out of five. Four out of five. Four for out of five. Skirmish. 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 Mike, you're going to have to put like stars across the screen for that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. For those who don't understand Northern, Skirmish. what they were spoke about today was a film called Scare Me. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Moving on. The next film. Uh, Evil Dead 2, the one released in 1987. Um, here's the synopsis. The lone survivor of an onslaught of flesh-possessing spirits holds up in a cabin with a group of strangers while the demons continue their attack. I'm going to go straight to Lun on this because that's who chose it. That's who loves the Evil Dead. 
Sorry. Right, Lund, so, Evil Dead 2, why did you choose number two? And so if we you did... haven't seen the first one, can you watch this? Yes, absolutely. The so, to set, <laughs> set the premise on this, and kind of the, there was a massive gap between Evil Dead 1 and then Evil Dead 2. How many Reasons years was that? Was it like six or something? Some at Riddick's like six or seven. Mm-hmm. Um, reason being is that they didn't have the rights to the first film. Yes, I said like a northern first, first, mm-hmm. first oh, film. I, I got right. <laughs> <laughs> I got um, right. So at the start of Evil Dead Two, there is the first ten minutes is basically a full recap of the Evil Dead One with a few big changes in how they found the ne- Necronomicon. Um, Which is the, the actual, of the Correct. Um, the actual girlfriend of Ash, who's the main character, played by Bruce Campbell. Um, and there's a few different things which is just kind of altered and changed um, just to kind of speed up the process and move into what happens after Evil Dead 1. Um, I've decided to go with this one because there is a few tropes in this film in terms of like bringing in comedic elements that I feel like this was one of the main original films that did that to and did it effectively. Um, I feel like everyone's going to really disagree with it in just a second. <laughs> Don't worry, we'll let you finish. And it is a fucking bloodbath, but yeah, there we go. Oh no, I'll agree with you there, man. It was a bloodbath. Like, oh yeah! <laughs> I love how silent we all are. <laughs> yeah, I, I, got, I instantly panicked. I was like, I was really worried about this one, but I'm starting to feel a bit better. So I'm waiting for you guys to speak I, first. I've seen the Dead Meat episode of the number one. I tried to watch the first one ages ago. I think I I specifically messaged you about it. It was a bit too slow for me to get into, but I've seen like the amazing makeup work in the original. I respect Sam Raimi. 100%. I'm not a fucking director. He knows what he's doing. I hate this film. <laughs> this is so shit. <laughs> what the fuck is this film? Can you I... put can you put Pearson in slow motion going, oh, I fucking, <laughs> fucking hate <laughs> this film? <laughs> what is this film? Oh, dude. <gasps> Oh, oh, I'm so dude, glad you said that. <laughs> the comedy no felt so. The comedy felt so jarring. It didn't make sense. Nothing scared me because I didn't fucking understand what was going on, other than the tree rape scene, which you've got to put that in there, haven't you? Hang on, was there a tree rape scene in Evil <laughs> Dead Two? Yeah, I was. thought it was just a tree rape scene in Evil Dead One. I was yeah, going to go I've... back for a sequel. <laughs> oh, it was in right. the... I don't think it was as graphic as Number One, but it is in there. So I, I I feel like I need to speak up here because yeah, please I love Evil Dead the remake. Like you oh. know, I've got the fucking tattoo of it on my arm. So I've never. Seen I it. think I think it's oh. fucking brilliant. It's on such. Yeah. It's got it's on such a different vibe to the original, which I, so I can understand why people are quite um, what's the word? Can't slip my mind. But people that are, are passionate. Why can't I think of that word? <laughs> People that are like really passionate like about passion. the original. So like, I can totally get why the original, the Evil Dead, the first one is well received. I've seen it. I quite like it. You know, I appreciate it. Um, but I do prefer the remake because I feel like that's more of a horror film rather than a bit of a wacky horror adventure type thing. Mm. Um, everyone's always gone on about Evil Dead 2. Like, it's like a cult classic. Shout out to my friend Simon. He's got like three tattoos of it on his arm. So I was chatting to him about it last week, going, Oh, I'm finally going to watch that next week. Watched it last night. Fucking hated it. Hated it. <laughs> it. It's just, it's just not for me. Like, I really like the, uh, I can totally appreciate the practical effects. Um, the deer head terrifying oh, yeah. Yeah, the I re- you know high. that bit was cool but like i fucking i zoned out right i'm sat on my bed there about an hour in i'm just like i was getting tired i wasn't feeling it kind of i was looking at the screen but i you know i really was not paying attention then i look back and there's this fucking long neck worm man thing <laughs> i'm like what is going on then he's in fucking medieval times <laughs> oh shit what is yeah. going on Dude, <laughs> you know what did it for me it's Bruce Campbell doing some sort of like act, solo acting of just oh my hand, it's and then like 
it became slapstick comedy, but yeah, to the point where I... I was very much over it. And I'm so sorry I'm saying this, Lund. But I shat on Bram Stroker's last year. I have to shit on something. I feel like a lot of people will be more on Lund's side than ours. So, like, you know, I, I, I can like totally to know understand we're true. probably in the minority for hating this because it is a proper classic. It's just not for me. I think it doesn't always mean good, though. <laughs> yeah, there is that. And I will jump up and say that I prefer one to two. Okay. Purely because I find Evil Dead 1 really uncomfortable to watch the certain parts of it like just in terms of like the sound design and stuff yeah. like that which the, the makes makeup it on so his girlfriend in the cellar and number one is horrifying mm. yeah mm. and this one i didn't really feel any horror i know right so so for me like i i, I enjoy the evil dead film so I, I i do enjoy evil dead too i do prefer the first one over the second one um but I, 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 it was it was one of the pioneers, I guess, for like that slapstick, it, which it was. It was very much slapstick comedy in horror, and I guess it was it was very adventurous at the time, and probably brave as Sam Raimi to actually do something like that, mm-hmm. uh, considering obviously the, the success that Evil Dead. Had. I don't know if it had the big success at the time, but obviously now it's got a big cult following. Yeah. Um, but the makeup in in this film is just fucking awesome. Um, the yeah. amount of effort they put into it there, I mean, yeah. Yeah, John, oh, hundred really, percent, mate. It's it's it's, it's untouched. It's, That's what yeah. kept me interested. Just like looking, and uh, to be honest, I was just watching it and imagining. More imagining being on the set, like when I saw this weird worm thing, knowing that's like you know mm. a real fucking prosthetic, whatever. So that must be a, been a fucking sick day on set, you know. Yeah. But yeah. it just... who brought this guy? <laughs> 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 so what, watching this at first after the uh, after seeing like Evil Dead, I was kind of like, what the fuck? I was like, it's the same. Uh, like, am I watching the same film here? And then like it's straight against more comedy. So it did take me that's a couple what's watches to sort of like, yeah, I guess that's sort of what puts people off. Because when I first saw it, I was like, why am I watching the same film again? But then, like, I guess after you watched it a couple of times and you, you start to sort of get why they've done that, um, you can maybe enjoy it more. But I, I can understand why someone watching it for the first time would be kind of like, what the fuck? Like, what am I watching here? You know what I mean? I think going in, anyone watching it has confusion because if you've seen Evil Dead, you know that story. I specifically phoned Lun up when I was starting to watch this and said, do I have to watch the original again to, you know, get familiar with it? And then said, mm. no, it recaps you in 10 minutes. I was like, okay, cool. Yeah. And then I was watching it and I was like, is this the recap? What the fuck is this? Like, mm-hmm. there's only two of them. Yeah. I feel you get very confused very early on and you've got to just work it out for yourself. Yeah, you've got you've got to work with it. Um, Maybe just the, go in not knowing anything. Don't listen to us. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. um, yeah, like like I said, some of the <coughs> makeup effects and some of the actual like uh, possessions in this and the sort of like creatures or whatever. Hmm. Um, I think some of them are pretty fucking creepy. Obviously, not as creepy as the uh, the fucking the the woman in the door, but um, you also get Ash's fucking chainsaw hand at the end of it as well, which yeah. is a bonus. So that's really? iconic. That's so yeah, nice. that was cool. Yeah. Yeah, that was um, cool. I know what you mean. It was weird when the next minute you're, you're in medieval times and next you're in like Monty Python my era. <laughs> I mean, I, no, I kind yeah. of understand that because they say specifically about the Necro- Necrocomicon, the lost pages that yeah, being this sorry. woman brings, it messes with space and time. So I can kind of respect that, but choosing to go back to that time was a weird... Yeah. That's gonna. That's the next film, isn't it? Because yeah, uh, one of, of darkness, right. one of my friends, his favorite film of the franchise is Army of Darkness, and um, <laughs> I'm, I, I think I'm still gonna ca- maybe carry on and watch it just for the sake that he loves it, so I'll watch it. But uh, I'm not looking forward to it. <laughs> <laughs> I'll only touch on it lightly with Army of Darkness, just purely because we're on about number two. It don't go in expecting it to be a horror film because it's definitely not a horror film. And then in Ash versus the Evil Dead, the TV series after it, there's not really any mention of it apart from him bragging that he went to medieval time, like at one point. That's about it. And it's never mentioned again. So would you say Ash versus versus the Evil Dead is horror or not at all? I'd say it sits in between one and two in terms of okay. the level of horror. Maybe it that's definitely what redeems I need to itself because it sits very much in the it's if you made Ash vs. Evil Dead is very much if Doctor Who was more horror, you'd have that. A more 
like gory practical effects instead. Yeah, that's probably what you'd end up with. Fucking like, love that. It, it, in terms was horror, even more horror. <laughs> um, yeah, I think like one of the pivotal like scenes in this one, which like kind of makes it like the cult classic, is when he Ash starts like losing his shit and like he's dancing with everything in the cabin, moving at the same time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like that shit is so good. <laughs> I think I I went in expecting a horror film. The, the, the name The Evil Dead and the Necrocomicon and, you know, reanimating dead corpses. I was like, shit, this is going to be brutal. I didn't feel that way. Yeah. no, it, I, it, I did like, know it was a bit it. more... I, I was told, you know, it's a bit more of like a comedy, you know, kind of... I, I'm not a big fan of... Sam Raimi, I don't think in terms of like what was it? Drag me to hell. Didn't didn't really rate that. Like Spider Man. The, the weird kind of kooky wacky horror is just it's just not for me. Hmm. So there is, there is a there is a market for it, and and obviously Bruce Campbell has fucking nailed that sort of character. He, you know what I mean? That's why he's so iconic with it. So you can, you can see why it's such a it has such a big cult following. Oh, hundred yeah. percent. Yeah. Yeah, so we're rating it, guys. <laughs> so um, I don't have a fun fact, but I do know one of the filming techniques for the first Evil Dead was Sam Raimi on the back of a motorcycle holding a camera, and they drove through the cabin. Like, yeah, <laughs> that there is some very cool cinematography and stuff um, that I think you can appreciate. Oh, hun- yeah. yeah, I can definitely. There was parts I can appreciate, and like I said, I just imagined. I was more watching it, imagining being on the set and being like, that would have been cool. 100%. But in terms of the finished product, I appreciate it. Not for me. Um, I'm just going to go in. I'll still give it a two out of five. Like, I think that's a fair rating considering I didn't like it. I think saying at the beginning when I said I hated it, I think that's a bit extreme. Like, it, it just wasn't for me. So I wasn't enjoying it. But I can see why people would like it. I can appreciate it. Just, yeah, not for me. Okay. Two out of five. Don't want to watch it again. Yeah. Go on, let's have you, Matty. Uh I'm going to give it a three. Um, again, it's probably not got got as high as rating as the first Evil Dead, but just for what it is. And again, it's originality at the time, the makeup effects. And yeah, I, I think sort of like the storyline being recycled, again, was a very brave thing to do. It is and, 100% um, brave. Yeah, like for me I, I enjoyed it and obviously like i said it, it wouldn't have a cult following if it wasn't if it didn't hold up yeah. for some people so yeah f- yeah for what it is uh, i'm giving it a free i can't really explain much else apart from what we've already been through nice let's go smith and we'll end with you Lund, so we'll go me after smith so uh one because my favorite scene was the credits <laughs> <laughs> oh whoa Oh, Look shit. at that. Look at his miserable face. He's not that is an expressionless Smith. That's just <laughs> <laughs> not sorry. <laughs> so what was it out of interest? So what was what was it specifically about the film? Was it just not your thing because you were expecting something different? When you put the evil dead from Evil Dead One to where they brought that to. I feel like it was just such an uh, it was such an understatement. I feel like they had such a great premise for something to continue with, mm. and they. But well, personally for me, they just went the wrong way about it. I, I just I like I understand why, uh, conceptually and story wise, as to why they went from where they did to there and where they're at now. Fully appreciate that magic. However, for me personally, not for me. Just couldn't get behind it, and I did try. I really tried. I will always give anything and everything a go. I'm, you know, once a time personally, you know, I always, I always give something a chance. But for me personally, that just wasn't it for me. So yeah, sadly, one star, my favourite scene was. I, I will say that again, just to fucking reiterate. Mm-hmm. I cannot believe you said one star. Listen, man, um, I'm entitled to an opinion. You absolutely I pay tax. are. That's what this is all about. <laughs> I pay tax. Um, I am giving it a two out of five. I feel like the cover is very iconic something i didn't mention but that that skull i've seen all the fucking time probably because it is a cult classic i know the phrase groovy before i went watching it so it's doing something i respect sam raimi i like his filmmaking i don't like this film 
That's my two out of five. Go on, Lun, end it positively and why I should like it. <laughs> um, <laughs> whoo, uh, no pressure. I'm, I'm gonna just into because uh, I'd seen I tend to like compare it to Evil Dead One and I hold Evil Dead One really highly. Mm. So, this is where I kind of think, well, it's definitely not in the same tier. And I, th- I think I've had this conversation about a thousand times every time someone's mentioned the Evil Dead when it's come up on the podcast. And I've gone, is it one or two? And they, when they go one, I'm like, damn right. Mm-hmm. Um, so, with that in mind, hello, dog. Teddy! Mm-hmm. <laughs> Brief dog intonation. Oh, no. There we go. Um, with that in mind, <laughs> I'm probably going to give it like a 3.5 out of 5 because, again, Evil Dead 1 was so unnerving in some concepts. But <laughs> it's all good. We can hear you. It's fine. People know you have a dog. Yeah. Hey, Ted. Um, it's just him loose to the table. Uh, so, yeah, I'm going to end it with 3.5. It's definitely better than Army of, the, Army of Darkness. Because there is there is some iconic scenes in it. However, Evil Dead One is definitely better. So did, I've did just had a quick look, and Evil Dead Two has got a higher rate than Evil Dead One on IMDb. Yeah, it's like ninety. On, on Rotten Tomatoes is like ninety five percent. Yes, they're both ninety five percent. IMDb's rated Evil Dead Two seven point seven, and Evil Dead One is seven point five. Wow. Yeah. Did we get Matty's rating? Yeah. What did you say? I said a three. three. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. What do we know? If uh, IMDB and Ron we're just five away. guys in our bedrooms chatting shit. Look at that! Right, chatting one. We're almost halfway. <laughs> well, hey, so <laughs> the next film is Ready or Not. Came out in oh. 2019. Synopsis for this film is uh, a bride's wedding night takes a sinister turn when her eccentric new in-laws force her to take part in a terrifying game. I'm going to kick this one off. This is the film I recommend to people who are not film fans. I don't know if Ryan agrees um, as he's walking away, you know. No, I'm here, I'm here. No, I'm only joking, mate. Yeah, this film is like, if you're not a fan of horror and you want to watch a horror this is what I recommend. This and Happy Death Day are my two, like, oh, you'll enjoy oh, this. Oh, man, yeah, I forgot about that film. Yo! <laughs> Touche. Those are the two films I feel like you can get into because there's this nice blend of comedy yeah. horror. This is the nice blend of comedy horror I like, unlike the last film we just discussed, Evil Dead 2. Yeah. Sorry, Lynn. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, go on, I'll, I'll open this up. Who wants to talk about it? Uh, well, the reason I scooted away, I love, if I love a film, I like getting on Blu-ray if it's got like a nice looking like, like uh, it's got to be everything, it's got to have the full package, the nice case, I like it's got to be a good film. I need the little cardboard sleeves. All about uh, the and this is one I was desperate to get hold of because I fucking loved it. Yes. Um, heard heard really good things about it. Like it was on my list to see, but I didn't think I was in, I don't think I was like going to rush out to see it. You know, like this is pre-COVID. So this is when you could, go to the cinema whenever you fucking wanted so i think i saw it like two weeks after it came out there was a lot of hype so i went in thinking oh there's a lot of hype you know this could go either way and i just loved it it was just so entertaining samar even is just an incredible so kind good. of lead actress the comedy was perfect all the rest of the cast were great you know is a i can't remember any of their names to be honest but um it, it was just great the ending i know a lot of people are a bit uh i think if you're well into your horror that's when you're going to appreciate the ending and just love it if you're a bit more of a casual film goer you're going to be like what the fuck was that ending that was dumb but it's like we wanted a bit of a dumb to be honest like it was fine um it didn't didn't see it coming either you know when they're there and just suddenly i was like what uh and then that final shot i mean i think i use that gif all the time of just oh, her on so the step. Good. Is it her on the step smoking the cigarette? Right? Smoking the cigarette. Smoking fires. The background. And, you know, yeah. shout out to a quote Probably that Milky Way has said, people are just sexier when covered in blood. Totally fucking agree. Samara Weaven at the end of this film is just insane. So yeah, big, big fan of this film. It's just so fun. Well, what I want to point out here is, if memory serves, the first 
horror film is uh, was the babysitter that Samara uh, took a part in, didn't it? She was yeah. uh, it was a Netflix original, and from then, I kind of became a little bit like obsessed is the wrong word, but I, I, I certainly I certainly kept an eye out for whatever else that she was then in because what she portrayed in the babysitter yeah. was everything that so, uh, uh, I was sort of looking for in, in terms of watching a film, whether it be yeah. horror, action, whatever else, because she's been in a couple of things. Uh, obviously, so the babysitter I just mentioned, um, obviously this one. Uh, and, oh, Maniac. Uh, the babysitter too. <laughs> babysitter too, Maniac. She was also in uh, three billboards out of uh, outside of Ebbing, oh, Missouri. Really? Was she? She's in that. Yes, she was. She's wow. the boyfriend to the divorced husband. The girlfriend to the divorced husband. Um, she, oh, she's cool. in that, but she plays someone who's like, she plays like a really kooky character. Like, oh, I didn't get her. Yeah. But yeah, I didn't yeah. like it. So, you know, <laughs> that, that, that's sort of true. Uh, I didn't but, no, remember that. Yeah, man, she, yeah, she's in it. So, um, yeah, um, fantastic film, this one. And the director, if memory serves, is the one who's actually going to be doing the newest screen film. Yep. Yeah, boy. Yep, yep, yep. He also did back a day VHS, if you've ever seen that, which was the um, the, the found footage horror films where it's like yeah. four or five films in one and then a story enticing all that all together. I've heard good things about that. I need to Mate, that. do yourself a favour. Watch VHS and VHS 2. Well, if Samara Weaven's in it, I'm sold. Uh, don't know. She's, she's not in them. Oh, uh, sorry. He's yeah, he's just, yeah, yeah, he's just the director of them. Uh, but right. do you, uh, if you watch VHS viral, please take that with like uh, I say a pinch of salt. Take a bottle of salt because. Uh, <laughs> uh, but the first two magical. You will fall yeah. in love with them because they are for, for found footage films. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Should have been on the magical. list actually. They should be that list next year. There is another oh, Halloween, yeah, yeah. So, and we will yeah. play it then. I'm going <laughs> to start next year's list. In a couple of weeks, 100%. Yeah. There's so many yeah. films. Um, Otherwise, we'll just forget what we're yeah, well, There's that's so it. many to talk about, man. Do you know how hard it is to narrow it down to 31 for a fight? Do you know what I mean? But in um, terms of ready or not, mate, from start to finish, I think, again, all five of us, huge horror fans. So when we first sat down and knew that this was coming, I think we started guessing, seeing what was here, there, and everywhere. And it's still, even... Uh, your, your first watch through it still leaves you a bit like whoa 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 like there's little there's little questionable bits you think I, I didn't expect that to see that coming but at the same time because of the kind of um because of the kind of the way the storyline like ebbs and flows you know kind of what's gonna happen but that ending as you said ryan as it goes i think it ends it perfectly because of what you've just seen because it's abrupt it's just sort of like a but again because you know what you're getting into with the sort of whole, oh, we've had a game through for generations where we like to do this as like a funny thing. You know, when it becomes generational, it's been going on for a long time. So you know for a fact it's going to be cult like rinse, repeat sort of storyline. So it's not unheard of, you know, but at the same time, it still surprises you. So it's like you're getting everything that you expect from all your horror films, but it's not shown in the same format as you'd expect. If that makes sense. Well, that's yeah. the fun it thing about the film, it. isn't it? It's like um, throughout the film, you kept guessing, is this mm. real or is it just tradition? That's it, that's it. So like you get a flashback at the very beginning of, you know, the the film. This is what happens. And one of the kids rats out the husband-to-be and gets murdered by the family. Um, so you don't know if this ritual to... Um, Lido, no, Lidomas is uh, the family name. Yeah. Mr. LaBale. Yeah. Um, it still makes if... me laugh that it's Lidombas. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah, Lidombas. <laughs> yeah, you don't know yes. if it's uh, Mr. LaBale's real or not. You just kept guessing throughout. So they could just be wanting to do this because it's tradition and that's what we're supposed to do. A little bit um, of fun. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've got two fun facts about this, so I'm going to give you one early. Ooh, um geez. Oh, why is my mind gone blank? I've got one written down. I'll, I'll just give you the one written down. So the exterior shots of the wedding are the mm -hmm. same exterior used in Billy Madison with the big fountain. Oh, shit. Hey. And the interior shots are the same this. house uh, of uh, Professor Xavier's School for the Gifted in X-Men. That's magic. More you know? Oh, yeah, it's the cool. same house from Arrow then. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah. yeah. So they use the same one as that. 
Yeah. Uh-huh. Look at this. But yeah, the fact that you kept guessing adds to like the suspense. Yeah, definitely. That's why you just don't see that ending come. I yeah. feel like we shouldn't say the ending on no, here. No, no. no At this point, think... I will happily say we will not spoil this one for yeah, you. Yeah, because I don't think you need to. Like, it comes so suddenly at the like at the end of the film that it's like, you know, if you yeah. know, you know. If you don't, just wait for yeah. it. It's fucking brilliant. Do you know what, I'm actually ashamed I've, I've not got around to watching it yet, oh, but like man. the sort of vibes I got from like the trailer and stuff, it sort of reminded me a bit of like the purge in regards to like all the chasey bits um, and the gore as well in it. But then like the sort of protagonist that she's, it's sort of like a Kill Bill esque character as well. It's also awesome so, compared to um, the film Your Next, which I've never seen. Yeah, so, so yeah. I watched Your Next after watching Ready or Not. So it must have been within the last, you know, year and a half. Yeah. Didn't rate it that much, um, but maybe because I would followed it. Oh, I, I, right, right, yeah, 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 I think I even remember saying at the time, maybe if I'd watched it the other way around, I would have appreciated mm. your next and then Ready or Not would have been like, this is like that, but way, way better. Yeah. yeah. Whereas going in reverse is kind of like, this film's just redundant. If I want to watch a film on this I'm kind gonna of watch. wave, yeah. then I'll go I'm going to watch there. a really good one, you know? Granted. And it's right, like you... why watch Hostel if you can watch Saw kind of thing, you know? Like Saw's a genuinely Ooh, good film. I mean, what are you saying about Hostel? And that's that's the the other film. They're both torture porn. I'll give you that. They're both very torturous. That's what I mean. Like if you want to watch if you want to watch a film like that, just go for like the decent one, which you know. Okay, yeah. Do you know what? <laughs> I, said, I said that back already. For next year, I see, right? no, yeah, I, yeah, yeah, I can yeah. see the comparison that you were trying to make because they are both. Uh, based on like torturous efforts, yeah, however, yeah, yeah. story wise, plot well, wise, they are very yeah, different, yeah, incredibly so. But you pointed out well something now. before Ryan as well, which was actually perfect. It was about uh, like comedy being in horror. I think this one perfectly, yep. 100% brings in the comedy elements, of yeah. the horror like, side of things. It's almost it's not too in your face comedy, it's more like you're laughing Satirical. at the, the cliche characters, like the like the the fucking the grandma character. Like, you know, uh, like the, you know, stubborn yeah. old. Woman. Yes, let's just you know, get this over and done with Saw deal. Yeah. Uh, Do you know why she's like that? Did you pick it up? No. Yes. Yeah, yeah. She's it the was... wife at the beginning who sees her husband get murdered. Mm-hmm. Uh, that's 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 that that's that's flashback so from the start thing. That's the reason why she's so fucking bitter now because she was stung by the game. Yeah. But so she knows exactly how the uh, Samara Weaving's partner feels. Yeah. Um, yeah, the comedy, it, it works so well, I think, because each character has got this weird, quirky... They bring their own different own... element of comedy. Yeah, yeah, yeah and yeah, it, it's yeah. so well executed. Like, you've got the coked-out sister, you've got the the wife of the brother who's just there because she's had a, a shitty life in the past and she'd rather be dead than anything else. Yeah. So it, there's all these quirks and... and they sell each character so well that the comedy pays off 100%. Lun, yep. you say something. <laughs> Words. I find this film quite refreshing. Um, I remember we... We, we watched this together, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, we did. Yeah. Um, and I, I was pleasantly surprised because I didn't really have high hopes for it, which my part's bad, but I've, I'm quite like that I went in with like no expectations about it whatsoever. I think that's a good thing. As well, can we just give a shout out to uh, the Samara Weaving scream? Because it is. Oh my nasty. god! Are we Legitimately, talking about... within the next twenty years, she will be part of the scream queens. A hundred percent. That twenty that years. That's a, that's where a, she's that's climbing a out of that pit in the barn and puts a hand through that nail. May. Oh, that May. scream! Unbelievable. It's <laughs> so. Oh, it echoes. Not like it? one pitch. It like kind of goes. Yeah, yeah. There's May, nice, like a nice fluctuation, man. Yeah. Why when you put it, a good call? Death on a scenes guitar. are in, uh, yeah, uh, funny within that <laughs> film, though. Do you know what I mean? That's that's really clever. How well, it's not clever, but how even though you know you just watch someone die on screen, right? You still manage to fucking. It, I scream laugh because of me. You know who I am. I scream laugh at deaths. But there's times where even the people who were squeamish would have gone, <laughs> they would have let out something because that was funny. All right, yeah, they're dead. But <laughs> I can see the comments about death. Like, it's, it's very well done. Very well executed, that is. I think this, is this even um, a film we got Laura to watch? It is. Yeah. So, so Fuck me. 
Yeah. Like Laurie watching the horror films very rare. So you getting Laurie to watch horror films. Me and Jess films were like, go on, do it. Well. Watch it. It's great. <laughs> Um, well, there it is. Proud of her. <laughs> I'm going to give you, like, the other thing I like is the, uh, the costume design. Very uh, well so Yeah. Avery Pluis, uh, the costume designer, like, you get the wedding dress where she's covered neck down, and it's a, an amazing wedding dress. Mm. And you see it slowly transition to she discovers she's being hunted by this family, right? The, the tail's ripped off and it's just her looking like a fucking badass in these com- white converse, dirty wedding dress. And then when she gets stabbed, she's ripping the, the shoulder off. Uh, and I looked into it. There's 17 different wedding dresses of like, you know, from pristine clean from, to from bloody here. cut up and so on. Like mm. unbelievable. But even like the family have got, each has got their own style. Yeah, yeah, fucking. That is cool. As a, yeah, visually, it's just so like, I, I just love watching it. Like, it's almost like a comfort film for me. That like, yeah. I just love the look of it. It's fun. Yeah, the the the, the wedding dress thing is brilliant. Like, you know, Samara Weaver is absolutely beautiful. But I do think just throughout the film, the court, the more like kind of dirty and bloody and stuff she gets i'm just like i love this woman <laughs> <laughs> that's a that's a girl who gets her hands dirty <laughs> yeah <laughs> if you haven't watched this film it, it's a must for like yeah. and if you're not into horror this is your intro into it yeah uh, i'll give you my fun fact i kind of have another two because i've just remembered one off the top of my head uh so the i think it's the coked out sister's husband mm-hmm. um he gets given a crossbow and you see him sat on the toilet not knowing how to work out a crossbow. So he's Googling how to use a crossbow to hunt down Samara Weaving. Yeah. And it's actually both writers of this. Um... For Game of Thrones, is it? No, no. The writers of Ready or Not are the YouTube video of like, here's how to use your crossbow. Uh, <laughs> no way. Uh, yeah. I, I immediately went just to Tywin Lannister. I don't know yeah, why. Yeah, getting shot on the bug. <laughs> yeah. um, I, I instantly other... thought sitting on the toilet. <laughs> sitting on the toilet. What an internet sensation. Oh how did I forget about that? <laughs> <laughs> oh God, sitting on the toilet. Smith is so loud for reference. <laughs> I'm, I'm the loudest person you'll ever oh, meet. I'm five foot seven of just. I love ah! it. Oh. I love it. Um, my other fun facts are the, the brother Dan. Um, the Hoover Dan. Plays... <laughs> the brother Dan got me paranoid about how I phrase things now. Um, <laughs> he plays uh, the, the sack guy in The Strangers. You know, does he? What? The coked out sister is in Saw 6 on, I think it's, you know, when Tobin Bell's life insurance isn't, you know, taking him on and he takes like the She's on the shotgun carousel. She, she's on the, yeah, the merry go round. <laughs> Um, so yeah, t- wow. two like alumni of horror there popping She's back up. She's like the third one who gets the shotgun board on if memory serves. Yeah. I'm really going in deep into my memory there. Oh, memory bank of Soul Six. I want to say she's the third one in Fox. I Soul completely Soul. trust you, Smith. Yeah, Rain Man over there. Uh, so- Jim, don't even quote me on that now because I'm, I'm, I'm a, bit, a bit shaky on that now, but I want to say <laughs> she's the third one who gets popped off. He's gonna lose sleep over this. He's gonna text us. Mate, honestly, my left eye is twitching. It's like, ah, 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 that's not right. The drive home, it'll be like, is it right? Is it right? Is it right? <laughs> I'm gonna have to Google this. <laughs> so, ratings. My- or is it more fun facts? No, no. I'm sure you had one more. No, yeah, I you gave, had like. I gave you the. I gave you one early. The Billy Madison and Professor mm. X. Mm. The writers being in the oh, yeah, video. Yeah, yeah. And mm. the actors being in the strangers and so. Sorry, I'm greedy. I want it. Sorry, more. have I, I not given enough? <laughs> you know. <laughs> <laughs> so going to ratings, Mike. After hearing what we spoke about this, are you yeah, more well, inclined I'm, to watch it? I'm 100 percent sold on it, and it's probably going to be the next movie I watch. So yeah, um, I'm glad I didn't watch it before, and but yeah, um, you definitely sold me on it. So I'm heartbroken. You, yeah. you haven't watched it. Yeah, I'm excited that I'm kind of jealous you get to watch it for the first time, <laughs> like you know. But yeah, I'm excited to hear what you think of it. We'll have to do that on our horror catch up, which will yeah, yeah, you know, be eventually. I want to hear that, my want to hear what you think. 
Right. If you haven't seen it, you'll have fucking failed us. <laughs> <laughs> Come on then, Ryan. Let's so whilst we were chatting, I had a look. So years ago, because I think this one's like three years old now, I did used to have like a bit of a film blog on Instagram. Oh, really? But f- yeah, but I forgot on the password, so I just don't use it anymore. <laughs> um but i just scrolled through and saw what i gave it there and at the time i gave it an eight out of ten so that would translate to what a four out of five five. but i think i've grown to love it even more so i'm gonna up it to 4.5 for me it's like it's an absolute favorite um if i was to have to like pick a top 20 horror films i don't know where on the list it would go it probably would be closer to the 20 mark but it would be there like i think it's fucking it's just so fun it's visually incredible performances are great there's so many cool little like you know little little easter eggs in it is decent i fucking yeah 4.5 wow i like it Fair. smith yeah man you know uh i'm not gonna go as uh as eccentric as ryan there with a 4.5 but i will give it a four uh because no, honestly man i would happen yeah uh, as uh, i forgot he said it before but i'd happily recommend this to anyone who is either a very new to horror or b very inclined with horror like just that sort of concept in general. Um, it's just so good to watch from start to finish. You will not be bored. Yeah, if you no, can be bored by this, I'd be very surprised because yeah. there's so much going on. I feel like because it's so much so much of a fun horror film, you you, be, you become invested straight away and you almost feel like you, throughout, throughout the whole film, you feel like you're saying to yourself mentally, like, go on, girl, you can make it. Do you know what I mean? Like, it, it, you, you can do this. Like... Yeah, you might be getting chased down, but <laughs> you can do it. Like you, you get fully <laughs> invested within her, and yeah, within her character, you're sold. So yeah, four point five. What? Oh, four out of five. Point... Oh, there we go. Four out of five. I, 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 uh, yeah, I feel like five. it would be a great film to watch with mates as well. Like you yes. know, don't don't go on your phones, don't go like that. But well, have like a, and... have a couple of beers, put the film on, and like it's almost one that like you'd enjoy getting like hyped over like you'd be with mates and you're like kind of shouting at the tv and things like that and it'd be yeah. like i feel like it's that kind of vibe yeah 100%. that's exactly what i've done with people uh me and lun watched it with both our partners my sister came around the other day not a huge fan of horror and i was like oh we'll put this on then because i want to watch horror jess wants to watch horror but my sister doesn't this will suit yeah. like it fits so it's many different between. categories yeah, yeah. It, it's so well done um I'm also giving it a four out of five. An amazing film, comfort film, like Ryan said. Yeah, can be revisited again. I don't. Again. I don't need Wouldn't to say bored. anything else except just yeah. go watch it if you haven't. And Man, if you have, yeah. just stick it on again. Oh, what a film! Lun, watch him. Um, <laughs> it's like, oh, you gave Evil Dead Two a bad rating. Watch this. <laughs> watch this. No, I'm gonna give it a four out of five as well. Nice. Look um, at this. I feel like it kind of sits in between, like you said, it sits between the whole comedy aspect, but it also has like the horror themes as well. And it fits so nicely within that. Um, and like Ryan said, it's one of them where you can, if you can watch it with mates, you can, it, it, it's very go with the flow, but at the same time, it's not, it's really bizarre. Mm. But yeah, I mean, Samara even is the main character. You, you are rooting for that. Um, but I feel like even like part of the family, the role somewhat have some like factor about him that you kind of really engage with him. Yeah, boyfriend like, um... or one of the then husband. Yeah, mm. yeah. You see his conflict of like, I, I love my wife it, now. It's the old blood versus water, isn't it? Dude, it's when they go to like the secret entrances and. He it shows his selfish side where he's like, Would you have stayed with me if I didn't tell you this? And he's like, Of course I fucking wouldn't. You tell me you're gonna <laughs> put me down and kill me. But like, yeah. So you see that and you see it more throughout the film. You see the brother's <laughs> conflict of I'm in this family, but I don't want to do this. And he likes Grace, her character, so yeah. Amazing movie. Moving Would swiftly on. Do watch. Right. The fourth. Oh, oh, hang on. If we're starting, I'm going to quickly go grab a drink. No problem. Four, five, go for piss. Wow, okay. okay. I'm going to go for a wee too if everyone's going places. <laughs> Drive a place piss and I'll see you in a <laughs> second. <laughs> I'll quickly say hello to Lauren the dog. One minute. God damn, okay.
All right. The next film in this list is Wrong Turn. Oh, uh, this <laughs> is the reboot released in 2021. Mm-hmm. Um, basically, friends are hiking up the Appalachian Trail and they are confronted by the Foundation, a community of people who have lived in the mountains. Mountings? Mountains. Mountains, you get me. For hundreds of years. And we have also almost like a second storyline of the father of one of these children, kids, youth. I don't know how old I think I am. Searching for them as they know they've gone missing and not been in contact. So... How do we all feel about wrong turn? Well, oh, shit. Shit. Ryan, start. <laughs> on, Ryan, Ryan get, get your negativity out of the way just so we can fuck it off. John. It was fucking dog shit. Um, watched the trailer, was quite excited, thought this looks cool. It's shot really well in terms of like, you know, they've, they've, they've clearly watched a few of the, the horror films that have come out in recent years and done quite yeah, well. I agree with thought, that. All right, let's... Uh, Let's, you know, let's do a bit of this. Uh, let's try a bit of this cinematography thing. You know, let's make yeah. this film look nice. It does, and look then very nice. and mm. then make a fucking boring as fuck two hour film, which just gets ridiculous at the end. It is just fuck off. I don't wow. like it. <laughs> what, what was it that did that for you? Because I feel you got up to a certain point. Because when this right. came out, me and you watched. Yeah, this yeah. First half an hour, time. it started quite well. I really liked the tree trunk falling in the woods Dude, bit. Brutal as fuck. Oh. Yeah. I don't know, then it just fucking dragged out for ages. I remember messaging you guys going like, I'm watching Wrong Turn. It started all right, but I'm starting to get bored. And then I pressed pause to go to the toilet and was like, guys, there's an hour and 15 minutes left. (laughs) It did not need to be that long. I feel like if they made it, if they cut out about 45 minutes of the guff, it could have been half decent. But it went on so long, I was just hating it. I was like, I remember watching it on a Saturday and just being miserable. <laughs> Damn. There was no, apart from, like I said, the tree trunk bit. <laughs> um, it was it was shit. Didn't like it. Carry on. Some, some of the messages <laughs> that they try and like portray all the way through it, just about stereotyping, judgment and stuff like that. It's too full on. I feel, I just feel like they, they watched on. some of the decent horror films that have been out in recent years, thought, let's have a crack at that, but we've got no idea what we're doing. Like the cinematography in this is absolutely amazing. Like in terms of like what the over wrong turns was, not in general. Like there was much better cinematography elsewhere in other genres. However, it is a massive improvement from where it looks like one of them films that's on Channel Five. Um, <laughs> I feel like there's a slight yes. improvement yeah. from that. The previous wrong turns have definitely felt like yeah. oh, I can tell this is a cardboard set, and yeah, you know, yeah. um, I feel they had to go this new direction. So if you don't know, previous wrong turns feature wrong like, turns one through six was led yeah. by some motherfucker called Three Finger or something. Three fingers, and it was all about incest cannibals. Yeah, basically. And this is completely absent from that. And I feel like, like Smith's just said, this is the seventh installment of Wrong Turn. Mm. It could be called something completely different. Oh, and yeah. That, it doesn't feel like change. it's part of Wrong Turn at all. Yeah. Wrong and film. the only reason it got called Wrong Turn 2021 is because it's the same writer as the original. That's mm. it. Um, That's it. But yeah, it's completely absent of cannibals, other than like a little nod um, of like right at oh, the end. Yeah, the the boys yeah. have picked out a film, oh, incest yeah. cannibals again. Yeah, what is with that? Uh, that was sick. Inbred hillbillies. Yeah. yeah, um, I like it because it is all about like focusing on people living in their own community and bubbles and judging others for it. So you've got these like city. Uh, what the fuck do you call people in yuppies? Mean? That's what they called it, didn't City they? Yuppies, mm. you know, doing well for themselves, and you have that in a scene. They're at a bar celebrating. They're going on a hike on the Appalachian Trail, um, and the, they're surrounded by, you know, the stereotype of hillbillies. So they're looking down on them. The hillbillies are looking down on each other. The townsfolk are looking down at the city folk because the city exactly folk came it. to the town. Yeah, that's exactly it. Um, <laughs> and I, I'm pretty sure the guy that confronts them is also the guy at the the petrol station in Cabin in the Woods. 
is Adam the character in this one who's got the fiance? We're naming names. Is he the guy from Nightmare on Elm Street, the remake? Oh my The goodness. reboot from 2010. Those, I watched that so one. Look, never watched I'm... it again, so I can't remember <laughs> one from it. Whilst you guys are finding that shit, I'll, I will point out what Ryan said there was actually pretty accurate, to be honest. Is, um, I feel I fully loved the newest long term installment, it, the, the reimagination of the whole, because one through six, like, I think the first, <sighs> first two. Uh, a, a genuinely okay to watch and then mm. three, four, five and six is just sort of like, oh okay I've got That's an hour true. and a half to waste Let's Thanks, it finally it came out <laughs> There it is <laughs> said it was there, didn't you? Um, So yeah, I feel like so the reimagination of it is, it is, is really cool, however, what Ryan said is perfect, that I feel like they've taken tropes out of X, Y and Z and just sort of went, do you know what yeah. we're going to mash them up and I'll put him in this film because it's got all sort of like the gaslighting bits of it. It's got the sort of whole cult side of things. Uh, another fucking typical whatever else. Uh, and they, they mashed it into one and they did. There's no, there's no pussy foot around that. But even though they did that, I don't think it feels choppy and out of place. No, they did make it work, but I, I feel. But I, at the same time, if they hadn't have made it as gory, as they did, because you know me, I'm a bit of gore. It's a good gore fest. <laughs> and that made job, that's a fucking gore fest, that film, from start to finish, mate. Uh, so I, for me, it's, it's fresh. It's screaming at the TV at some point. Yeah, it's, it's fresh uh, on the mind sorry, for me because I watched it. Well, before you start, it isn't Lun. It is not the guy out of. Yeah, I was just going to say. It looks fucking similar, though. Yeah. I mean, I've suppressed that nightmare on Elm Street, so I don't really know. Yeah. But what was the other? What was the other thing we were looking for then? It was so, just that. That no, was no, it. I'm sure Ryan was looking for something else. Well. No, I was looking for the same thing. See if Adam was in um, Nightmare on Elm Street. Ah, right, okay. Go on, mate. Yeah, so it's fresh in my mind because I only watched it last night, and I put it off for so long because watching the trailer and the whole cult thing and. It you had the conflict to... of me and Ryan being like, "Oh, it's good. Mm. It's terrible." Yeah, <laughs> like it sort of it sort of put me off it, so I did push it back for a while. And yeah, so I, I did write quite a few notes. So it it is fucking very stereotypical, and it pulls off a lot of other movies. So you've got the beginning where the bunch of people in the middle of nowhere who are from like middle America, and then you get the strangers acting weird in the bar, and you think, "Oh shit, something's gonna go down." And then you get the people that warn you not to go in the woods and don't turn over here, guys. Don't go off the trail. Yeah. 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 yeah, like it's just yeah. so fucking... fucking... And yeah. also the, the fucking party that they always have before they go on the trip as well. Every That's another fucking stereotypical thing. <laughs> the only it. thing I'll give credit to in this film is that they do spend some time trying to give some sort of like character development to these people that we're meant to be watching 100%. for two hours. Because it's, it's, it's the typical trope. And I think this was mentioned in the... Um, Kill Count Dead Meat did, um, where they kind of give the quotation that the director kind of wanted to actually create characters and have some sort of like backstory to him rather than just being his character A, E, B, C, D, and they're all dead now. Okay, bye. Yeah, and, yeah, and I, think, I think that's why you find out the backstory in that bar where the, they have the confrontation and it's like, well, he works for a non profit. This is a married couple who own a bistro, a mm. gay together, and you know. Things like that. Um, but you, the other thing I like is you have a death, and even like three or four deaths in, you don't get the character going, I'm used to this shit by now. There's still that hung up part of the character development where there's it's still, still made real in shock. Yeah. Mm. I like that. I think that's something you don't see. Often you'll get a horror film and it's like, Oh, oh person X is dead. I dealt with that. I'm okay. At, at least Let's crack on. Yeah. Yeah. I think of like the Belco experiment straight away. The fucking oh man, CEO. yeah, he's like, okay, okay. we're killing people. <laughs> Boom. Oh, <man. laughs> that that was on my list to watch. I think I don't think I've ever seen Dude. it. The Belco oh, do yourself a favor, actually watch it. It's decent. That is yeah. a film oh, I wish I put on this list. <clears throat> John C. McGinley into Doctor Cox from Scrubs. That's it. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in yeah. yeah, that's a hundred percent going to be on next year's. Yeah, yes. yeah, I need to, I need to get on that. It's genuinely so, worth a watch, mate. It is, it's a decent, yeah, it and it's got a pretty decent little storyline to it there. Um, but well, back to wrong turn because that's that's yeah. next year. Yeah, yeah, yeah we yeah, almost yeah, took a wrong turn there. Yeah. Well, hey. uh... the, the first thing that impressed me about this, I think, like after well, after obviously seeing all that beginning bit, I was kind of like, yeah, 
seen it all before. Yeah, then they're going yeah. hiking up the mountain. I was like, for fuck's sake. I'm like, why, why the fuck am I watching this? And then, like you said, that tree scene hit and I thought, okay. okay. Oh, it hit all right. Yeah, yeah did so, it fucking hit. So I was like, right. So they're going sort of equivalent to the gore because I didn't think you'd get to see his fucking face that way. Like, mm, yeah, dude, that was fucked Talk up. Yeah. That, that was um, so good. I love so, you. You look like grim. I. <laughs> we're up, we're all there like having our dinner watching it like Ugh. yeah it's like, Ooh, i'm put off i was like give me extra helpings <laughs> give me extra helpings oh, well that's mate. not the only school that gets fucking crushed so you see about no, it two isn't. other schools get fucking mangled in it that as well. is one of my favorite deaths the court where the guy's guilty of killing a that's member it. of the foundation yeah. And it's okay, it's an well, eye you for an eye. Him. You will die the same way. You it's the same log. And oh, the same log as well. That's yeah, sick yeah. as well. The Those motherfuckers went out back into the woods and went, <laughs> no, that one smells <laughs> like wood. <laughs> wood. That, one. <laughs> that one's got iron on it. <laughs> like <Jolly>. <laughs> 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 Beautiful thing. Fucking comical. The uh, so special comical. effects, you see like the fucking oh, indentation in the face is brutal. I would yeah. probably compare this toy- type of gore to Midsummer. Yeah, Midsummer do you know what? I was fucking thinking that. I was thinking of that fucking uh, that mm. hammer scene yeah. in Midsummer yeah, when yeah, that yeah. happened. Yeah. Yeah. Is he dead? Yeah. Obsessed it. Even Ding. like, is he still dead? Mm. One more. <laughs> <Ding>. <laughs> Looks like spam at the end of it. Mate, yeah, you could have put Even him on like, a burger and eaten him. The cult aspect of uh, when they sacrifice the elderly people in midsummer, almost like uh, when they burn the people's eyes and let them roam around in darkness. Oh, that yeah, is the like exile. a purgatory yeah. sort of. Sort That's of the deal. exile they experience. This Magic. is, if you like gore, this is the film for you. Oh, yeah. Um, oh, my. Carry on. I stuff, didn't sorry. To... So, 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 like, like I, I know what Ryan said, like, the whole, like, especially the middle part, there was just fucking like, Massive too much cliches. there. Fucking, it, it, no, so, yeah, so it was cliches, but I think it dragged a bit too much for me. And to be honest mm. with you, I wasn't enjoying the film. Or I, like, obviously, I liked the little bit with the fucking tree because, like, yeah, it's fucking gore. <laughs> I did that. I and then, the and then, um, and then the, when it started getting better for me is probably just after they had the guy, like, and it was, it was sort of like carried him away. And then that whole fucking thing oh, happened where, where he bashes that fucking guy's uh, elk head in. Skull yeah. Guy. yeah. Yeah. And I was like, okay, a fucking shit's he's quick go to down kill here. as well. And it's almost yeah. that, like, oh, he's different from us. So it was okay for me to kill him. <laughs> you know, he was going to yeah. kill us. But then that's when the characters get, get sort of like the morals, isn't it? Like which Except, uh, yeah. which is very rare that you see in horror films. It's just like, oh, that guy's dead because I killed him. Oh, yeah. let's hide the body then. And then one of them's actually like, well, hold the fuck on. Well, he he Why? kills he kills that guy because he can't find his girlfriend. Because he so, yeah. so it's his okay. Pops up. And his girlfriend yeah. pops up behind. She's like, I went out this morning to pee. Yeah. You guys were gone when yeah. I got back. Oh, I kind of killed a guy. Uh-huh. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that is said. It's like, so you killed him for no reason. You, you know, you had no confirmation on that. No. So you are seeing this conflict amongst the friend group, which is probably stereotypical as well. Go on, mate. I keep interrupting you. Sorry, no, I feel so very bad about that's it. That's what picked it back up for me. So as soon as she pops out and, she, and she's like still alive, I was like, oh, shit, like what the fuck's going on here? And then it starts getting like better from there. So like if I could just watch it from that point onwards, I probably would be happy with it. Like yeah. maybe a little setup at the beginning. Obviously, I know they've just got to have the rest of it because it's got to sort of, have that for the character development but still uh yeah i think that the last like probably i think it's probably like the last 40 minutes or whatever uh sort of brought my opinion back up on it a little bit especially the little twist and that at the end and like you said those scenes in the actual play the village where they all stay in the tunnel bit where everyone's fucking blind and that yeah so oh. th- those bits sort of fucking brought me back around with it but yeah can we talk about the so the, the couple that Lund mentioned that are engaged? Mm. Um, she falls into a pit of spikes. Yeah. Right. Oh, but bef- before this, they're like, I'll never leave you. We're in yeah, this together. Yeah. So, yeah. She falls in the pit of spikes and he's like, I'm gonna go I'm gonna get, help. get help. <laughs> it's like, She's oh, like, don't you fucking fucking I'm gonna run and help myself, is what yeah. that loosely yeah. translated to. And the, the woman's lying there, spikes in her body, she just goes, Fuck you. It's so good. And it was grim. Like. Oh. But it is think, that betrayal of like, yeah. you don't really know, you know, even a loved one. If I fell in a pit and Jess said she'd stay with me, I don't know that until I'm falling in the pit. 
Like that's that's a. It's all words life, until it? actions. Around, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> you don't know what you're gonna do until you're in that situation. Would your loved ones really look after you but if you were fair, dying? But to be fair, you to leave me, if, if I fell in a pit, leave me. I think from then on, you knew he was gonna get his comeuppance. So though, like you start, you sort yeah, of knew that yeah. something bad was gonna happen to him, and yeah, it fucking did. So. Well, whether you like it or not, mate, he killed someone, and he had to pay the repercussions. Hundred yeah. percent. So that so, twist as well, holy let, yeah, shit. Let's... I don't know if you mentioned it, but... No, no, it, um... we'll leave that as it is. Even then again, I, yeah. we will not spoil this for you. But the twist at the end... Oh, so we're not talking about the ending? Nah, man, we want to leave that to people's interpretation until but they watch it. Part of me would... thinks, was that the twist or were they just fucking having them on and bullshitting them? Like, was they actually going to do what they, uh, they thought they was going to do? If you've seen yeah. previous Wrong Turn films, one through six pretty sure they would have done it yeah um so, yeah because <sighs> they're a committed bunch do you know what i mean trying yeah, to cause, this because they've got done for trespassing as well so wouldn't they be counting yeah, as trespassers as they would have ended up in the dirt pit anyway Ooh. go on lan go on mate i've got a point it's not really swear of the ending but i really hated that they were still showing the film <laughs> Like wrapping up Credit. during Credit. the credits coming on, yeah. I hated that. That really wound me up. You know what? That I don't know because I watched it. Like I downloaded it. If you watch it on Netflix, would that trigger it to bring up the whole like? Yeah, it would. Watch yeah. next thing. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it would. It would. Netflix yeah. need to sort um, that out. They do. There should be an option like don't suggest it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Do you suggest it, kind of thing. Mm. Um. Yeah, because you've got there's a. I don't want to fuck say it. What you can. it. Say what Hit you can. Five minutes. There's like a fake ending, right? And you're almost you see it play out, and you're like, she's a fucking badass still. You know, she's PTSD ridden, still torn up from it. And then it's like, snap. Oh, this is just me thinking it all out. And it, that I liked. It didn't because it it added. Well, to, she like, goes from moral goddess to Xena warrior princess in about <laughs> half an hour, so it's just like. Well, that's when oh, she no, got to protect all to humanity, yeah. and then it's just like, nah, fuck humanity, ting. <laughs> yeah, she just smashes it, man. Should we jump but, to ratings because this is an absolute gore fest? And oh mate, yeah, start to like, like, not ruin it. But yeah, I'll uh, I'll happily give this a nice four point five out of five just because. What? Whoa. Holy shit! I uh, shirts off. So are so are his ratings. Oh, Fucking hell! Jesus I, Christ! When I, when I watched this, I I I went I went and took it in without taking in anything oh that we just spoke God. about today. Yep, because I fully. Uh, bear in mind, I watched all the wrong turns from when they first came out to where okay. they were up to then. And so I'd followed them. I, I knew everything in and out, free finger and his cronies. And when I saw this reimagined and it was turned into Midsummer esque, it really revamped it up for me. However, since taking in what we've said, I'm still giving it a 4.5 because the gore really does it for me. I love that. Taking in everything we've just said, <laughs> I'm not fucking listening to it. Stick to my original opinion. <laughs> so there's a difference between hearing. And listening, so I heard what you said. Yeah, yeah just not gonna fucking listen. listen. Yeah. <laughs> no, four point five out of five for me. Personally. No fair. Art, art is subjective, man. Like I'm just that just shocked me. I was like, I knew you liked it. I was thinking you were gonna yeah. come out of a three point five four of fucking push, a confident four point five like that. Fucking out. <laughs> well, I've watched it. This. No, no, no lie. I've watched it about seven times now. How? Because I, I really enjoyed it. It Mate, was great. I watched it once. I felt like it took two days of my <laughs> life. So well, you've, Ryan. on in in terms of my viewing of the film, you've wasted two weeks of your life watching <laughs> this film seven times. Um, so my letterbox is half star because I think I was just fucking angry that I'd wasted my time on it. Talking about the gore, oh, like I forgot gosh. about the um, I forgot about the bit where the you know the where she falls on the spikes and the dude leaves her and stuff. The gore is fucking fantastic. Um, I, you know, the fact that that scene made me feel quite uncomfortable. The trees, the tree falling scene was like really exciting. <laughs> but there's also um, little bits within it as well, mate. Like you know when like they're con- like they're disguised as the trees, and they're sneaking along. Yeah, oh, <laughs> it should. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Parts of like that are why the film should have been better. 
which is why I'm more angry that it wasn't. So I'm only up on it a very slight amount to a one. Why has no one done an Alan Partridge joke about the spikes? I don't I don't know. Oh my about god, there's like there's like an infamous like scene of where he tries to climb over a gate and gets his foot stuck on a spike. He's like, I'm stood on the spar. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I do not, face. My tattoo artist was telling me about Alan Partridge <laughs> and it does sound funny. I need to watch it. But yeah, he's, um he's no, just to not sideline too much. Wrong turn. I've upped my review, my rating from half star to a full one out of five. Okay. Just <laughs> just for the gore and the uncomfortable elements of that part. But they fucked it. They they just took too many ideas from other things, mashed it all up, didn't have what I would call like a fine final product, you know. Mm. Uh, for me. Oh. Oh. Why did I look? <laughs> so um, my dog. For me, uh, I'm gonna give it three point five because I love the golfer. Out of the wrong turn franchise, <clears throat> original, and then I'd go straight to this. That's personal opinion. I'm not huge into the wrong turn stuff, which is probably why I was happy like it was absent of the incest cannibals oh, mate. Yet to begin with. Not to be a fu- um, not to be funny or anything, but those fucking films went on for too long. They should have dude. stopped at at least four. My theory. I've actually is... quite liked Wrong Turn Two back in the day. Like that yeah, was yeah. when it was like a I reality mean, yeah. show, and then one, cannibals two, turned out one, two, and three at a push. Yeah. Any Decent film. Margins, but... If you go past a trilogy, you have to have something special. Like Transformers. What are you doing? Yeah. No. Oh, like, you get on that. Yeah. But the, here's the thing. Wow. If uh, fucking Peter Jackson can make three films about walking box office, the standard is low. Everyone's gonna go. I can have a trilogy. Yeah. My story's important because Tolkien made a story in three films, you know. That was my little rant about <laughs> trilogies uh, going off too long. Um, my fun fact, I don't actually have, but I do know this is the second film to have a theatrical release in the Wrong Turn franchise, first and then this. Yeah, the first one did. Because it had what you would consider... A class actors at the time. Mm. Elisha, was it Alicia? Do, oh, what, what's her name? You're right with Alicia, but I can't. Eli- her name. Eliza Dushku. Uh, I know, mad crush on her when I was a teenager. Though she was in like uh, Bring It On and the new guy and shit. And the the male actor, the main male actor in it is there's the some A-list celebrity detective guys. in Dexter. He's he's the one who's uh, who's dating Deb at one point yeah. in Dexter. All right, others, other guys. Right, let's ratings. go to Lund because I really want to know what Mighty thinks because we've never spoke about it. Okay, so I'm going to be a bit more diplomatic and I'm going to give it a two. Two. I'm going to give it a two. Oh, okay. Um, so what makes you go towards the lower end rather than the higher? I think it was because I'll appreciate that there was an attempt do something better than what the previous wrong turns had done, especially to I think there was a low bar anyway. Sorry, <laughs> um, Again, Channel 5 looking fucking <laughs> films. <laughs> this is so this sense made out of cardboard. It's not even real. Um, like, again, cin- cinematic wise, it looked great. The gore in it was. They really fucked the, it up. Yeah. I think. The runtime and it really made it suffer. Um, I feel like they kind of went a bit too far with his the every other stereotype. I think as well with the the bar scene where did she goes like run what every single person does. It reminds me a bit too much of the 2016 Suicide Squad where it was kind of they got taken the piss out of the plane scene where he goes through every single character on that plane and tells them what the backstory is. And everyone gave that shit, so I'm giving it shit in this. It's yeah, so annoying when people yeah. do that. Like that's so how so you so establish so character's background is not the way to do it. Like I'm gonna brag and tell you everything about this person in ten seconds. Yeah. Um but at the same time, I do appreciate in general that there was a bit more character development with these characters rather than just being it's character A and B and they're gonna die in fifteen minutes. Hmm. Go on, mate. Yeah. Um, so yeah, like I said, going in, 
a lot of stereotypes there. So I, I, I didn't grasp it for me at first, but then obviously it sort of turned it around towards the end. Um, even though I probably wouldn't watch it again anytime soon. If I wanted that, I'd probably go watch the original Wrong Turn yeah. or any other films that are like similar to that. Um, I do, like I said, I do appreciate like the the gore and like the, the fact that he attempted to to like re- sort of revamp it and have a different sort of storyline to it. And there was elements that was pretty cool, like 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 I said that the scene with the people with like no eyes and all that sort of thing, and the twist mm-hmm. at the end, and the whole dad going back and with the fucking uh, with the hunters and like trying to find them. Uh, Those hunters thought, get killed off so quick. Yeah, they you... do. I was like, what the fuck? <laughs> yeah, but, that was kind of fucked up. Like, oh, yeah. you're almost at the end. Here's a new character. <laughs> yeah. yeah. What was the point? There wasn't. I know. Well, well the point, I think... Show, well, that, right? that, that's called hope. Hope I comes think in the, very uh... small doses, and it doesn't necessarily mean it's going to last. So... But you could have established that character by having the kids run into him because he knows these woods... And that could be it. And then it's just like, oh, I know a guy who can show you through these woods. Well, you, well the, another thing Sorry, that's Michael. sort of like uh, you just see pulled the score up a bit <laughs> is a uh, <laughs> <perfect dog laughs> cut out. Lad, for the fucking past minute, I've been looking at your wall going, lad, there's a shadow of the dog. I didn't even see the dog. I need to look fucking further past my nose, mate. I'm sorry. There she is. <laughs> Um, so yeah, I think uh, what also sort of probably brought the score up a little bit more for me is um, is the twist with the guy you see in the bar. And you you initially, I see a bit of a spoiler. You initially think he's gonna be one of the fucking killers, and it turns out to be one of the saviors at the end, which I I, I, I pretty liked, and I thought that was a good little ending to it of how they uh, how they managed to get away. So um, yeah, overall rating for me, I'm gonna give it a two point five. Okay, so quite a varied rating throughout this film. So I don't know. Choose whose description you like the best and decide if you want to watch it. Let us know in the comments. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, now it's a show. Right. So the next film, uh, Wrong Turn was chosen by Smith. And Life was also chosen by Smith, which is our next film. Uh, Life released in 2017. A team of scientists aboard the International Space Station discover a rapidly evolving life form that caused extinction on Mars and now threatens Earth. Quite a star-studded cast of Jake Gyllenhaal and Ryan Reynolds being uh, on the press junket for this, I remember. They certainly are. And Rebecca Ferguson, who is really kind of coming up lately. You know, she's in... um, uh, Greatest Showman, Doctor mm-hmm. Sleep. Yep. But I think oh, life. Shit, she was in Doctor Sleep. Yes, she, she was, was fucking Fuck. brilliant in Doctor Sleep. She yeah. absolutely um, destroyed her role in that. She smashed it. Yeah, she. Uh, this was the first time I ever saw her in anything, and I've definitely seen her popping up a lot since. And it's great to see. Like she's. I, I think didn't she's even fucking realize brilliant. that was the same actress. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I think one of my favorite things about uh, life is is it's a. Uh, well, it's a good, uh, it's a good old sci-fi horror. You know, you find yourself delving into the fucking old sort of like alien concepts once again, which I don't think nowadays, as far as I'm aware, gets actually visited enough now. Because back a day, aliens was sort of a concept that if you press that to someone, you'd go, "Ooh, what if?" Whereas as time's gone on and people's learned about space and whatnot, they sort of ah yeah, we're all alone. Where does the pale blue dot in the mist and whatever else? Who the fuck but, are you talking to that thinks we're all alone? Yeah, no, I don't know anyone that I, even I think my mum believes in aliens. <laughs> I know people who don't. The universe um, is infinitely expanding. Doesn't mean there's life. Do you think that? Well, that doesn't necessarily mean oh, there's life though, does it? Fucking get out my house. All right, so it's been a pleasure. I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> it's you, it's not you, it's your friends, it's not you. <laughs> Pearson just knew that this, uh, it, you'd go full committed on this joke and we'd be wait, waiting another yeah, five minutes was, for you to come yeah. back. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's a good shot. Yeah, it's not worth playing that game. Not but worth playing I think, that game, I think so. you're right, you know, like thinking about it, there was so many Alien sci-fi, yeah. yeah, there was so many sci-fi horrors back in the day. And I remember like a couple of months ago, like really getting interested in, I had a sudden craving to watch sci-fi horror and mm. i was like messaging people like oh can i recommend any and it was all films from like the 90s and stuff which you know were good but it's not many new ones i remember when arrival was released 
I kind of thought we were getting something like that, and we didn't. I mean, is that is that quite horror? Because I've never no, seen it's not that. at all. No. Um, right. I don't even know how you describe it. The really, the last one I can think of that like, might be the is. recent, most recent sci-fi horror is the Faculty. That was nineties, mate. Yeah, oh, I, know. I was thinking Fourth Kind. I'm I'm not thinking anything. Two thousand six. Um, un no, not underwater. That wasn't really aliens, or was it? Was it? Was underwater a planet and then they're underwater on the planet? Or was it the Earth? I don't know. Underwater was kind of a it. bit. It's got, um, way, it's got Kristen Stewart in it. It came out like just before oh, COVID, I think. Yeah, I know what you mean. It was all right, actually, but it didn't get much of a big release. Another film that's kind of alien It is listed as a horror underwater. Oh, yeah. I, I, I just can't remember if it's really sci-fi or if... But, I mean, it's kind of like Christian Stewart in it, so... It's kind of like fishy aliens. Like it was, it was all right. Like it was a, a claustrophobic horror. I'd say like it was good in the cinema. Don't think if you watch it at home, unless you watch, effect. unless you've got a really good TV and you watch it in the pitch black, because mm-hmm. it was a very dark film. You know. Yeah, I think going off my memory again, I think the, the latest film I've seen considered alien esque was a Nicolas Cage film, which was Color Out of Space. Oh yes, that was good. Magic film again. We I need don't to know cover that. At some alien point. horrors, apparently. Um, yeah, it, it was a weird Which, one. Though. To be fair, this one I don't, I didn't think of as a horror. I'd seen it and was yeah, like, yeah, same. that's great. And then until you mentioned, oh, you want to put this on the list, I was like, is that a horror? I only when I watched it again, yeah. mate. Once I watched it again and saw some of those deaths, I was like, this is absolutely a horror. Mm-hmm. It's. <laughs> It's Ooh. a genius film, this one, um, because, again, you know, everything that we've known about aliens uh, back a day through films, it's reimagined through this film. We are given a life form that, again, we are unaware of what it is, but it just develops faster. Yeah, and it's not this, like, overpowered, like, if you think of yeah, alien. Yeah, when you literally alien, 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 and you see the size of it, and you think, oh, right, okay, scene, granted, okay. Yeah. we're fucked. This thing's small enough. It's a tiny single cell at one point, and they see it multiply. It's a carbon-based life form in this film, but it photosynthesizes like plants. So you get all this knowledge in the film, and you're like, it's stuff you can comprehend. You're like, oh, okay. What? And th- that's what blends to its realism. It's like, oh, I know what photosynthesis is because that's how plants are formed, and you know. If anyone has, did anyone get the name of the name? Uh, the name of the name? The name Alvin. that the, the Alvin. Right. Alvin. I fucking really appreciate that, right? Because they just sat there one day and went, "Hey kids, do you want to name the thing that's gonna destroy Earth?" <laughs> Dude, by the way, that was one of my gripes with this film. Why are all these kids getting the questions and not other people? They are like scientists and shit. <laughs> yeah, I think just because it was it was seen as such a positive thing. We found and it. like, yeah, and true. it was almost Let's like, the kids. yeah, you know, like it was, her. it was yeah. all a big like American. Let's make a big thing of it on TV. What's like wholesome? Okay, school yeah. children that pure and innocent. What's gonna bring more viewers in? Yeah, Times Square. Let's, let's yeah. just yeah. let this. What is it? I think they even said like, I mean, you don't obviously see this part, but I think they even say like, because it's clearly they there's they've known of this for a long time in America. Mm-hmm. However, I think they say there's been a competition throughout the whole of American schools for one person to pick it. Yeah, which, that's right. Why the fuck did Calvin win? Um, but whatever. <laughs> um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, that, I, I, that's kind that. of like a nod to the the you know the space programs we've previously had. For like, not to go into the Challenger disaster, but we had that in place for like oh an everyday citizen gets to go to space and we chose a school teacher not we because i'm not american but mm-hmm. or the, a school teacher yeah a, a school teacher <laughs> to go to <laughs> um space which unfortunately the challenge disaster happened but i think it was kind of you know referencing this is what nasa did at one yeah. point so it kind of does fit it's believable i, I think yeah, that 100%. would happen you this know, is it's... what I'm getting from it. Like, I, I've not watched this like yet, and because I, I'm very tough to convince on alien movies, like especially when they or or any sci-fi movies when they're stuck in a fucking, or, or, you know, up in space inside like a yeah. shuttle or whatever. It, it's but, hard um, to convey. 
Yeah, well, what I'm getting from this is like it's it something that po- probably could happen in real life. It's nothing like too out there, do you know what I mean? Yeah, hundred percent. Like, sort of like <laughs> this could happen in real life, and the other the other thing as well. The other point I've got is um, it sort of reminds me of the thing as well. It's like yes, really see yes. the substance oh, itself. Yeah. It just like it obviously like possesses and like manipulates people. Which is like the sort of vibe we get it from it, so that might be able to watch it. But. Yeah. So you're ve- you're very similar to that concept, but you do end up seeing what this creature looks like and how it grows and develops. Yeah. Does um, that remind you of? There's a film from about like 2006 called Sunshine. Chris Evans was in it. Yes. yes. I need to rewatch that. Magic film. Uh, yeah. Danny similar. Boyle in it. That's yeah. right, mate. Yeah, that's right indeed. Uh, very similar concept in a sort of a sort of scenario. Um, but what I really appreciate about life was, is um, again, it's, it, it's a fresh take on the sort of alien concept. So we found this life. We're going to be like, oh, you know, as humans as we do, because we think we're the sentient above everything else. We go, oh, we can use this and we can do something with it. Completely unawares to us is what this life form is, does what, it, what it's already done. And then it's so on, so on and so forth takes over us. Uh, I won't. I won't go into the ending for it for you because it, it 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 ends on a very open ending for you to. I want to talk about the ending, but I'm going to request Matty takes his headphones off because I don't want to spoil it. Yeah, uh, well, um, we'll let you know Matt, when we do it. will be me too. In a yeah, minute. Say, in a minute. Has Lund not seen it? Either. Oh, oh shit! Oh, you two come fuck off then. <laughs> so I'm going to go into some depth, <laughs> but um, one thing oh. I want to say is the cinematography in this. Like, I feel a lot of space films, uh, <laughs> oh God, a lot of space films, the cinematography has to be on point. But another thing I noticed at the beginning, have you noticed like the camera is floating around? So you're seeing like, it, like it's in zero gravity. Yeah. Like you're part you're of looking it. Looking at characters who are upside down on the computer mm. and stuff. Uh, but jumping into the deaths, Ryan Reynolds' death is fucking yeah brutal of zero gravity blood just and you see it cut it made me so uncomfortable yeah the worst thing about it is is that like after like two or three pumps of blood is that you realize that none of those are his coughs anymore and that's just the blood being forced out of him yeah because also there's how that happens quite early on as well like obviously he was very advertised like because i remember um i think i went to see it with an ex-girlfriend at the time she was big on ryan reynolds I fucking love Jake Gyllenhaal. Nice. Jake Gyllenhaal is literally my favorite actor. Like, I know he's not the best. He's my favorite actor. So I, I, I he's legit one much. of the best out there. Yeah, I'm love real fully with you, Ryan. Um, but Nightcrawler, bro. Uh, well, yeah. Um, <laughs> seeing as the boys have taken their headphones off, I'm going to quickly run through the ending. Um, t- please, spoilers. Do not just skip ahead like a minute yes. or two because this is not an ending I want to spoil, but I want to talk about it. That was fucking tense. I didn't see it coming at all, right? So they split off in their pods. One's going to Earth, and then the other has got the alien on board to take far away because there's just no destroying this alien. It's it's, yeah, they've realized now at this point there is no way to get rid of the alien other than to fire it off back into the direction it came. Yeah, because one's got talk about it's a firewall, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. One's got to sacrifice himself. One can go back. But the way that it, that the alien's oh, so mate. fucking smart, it twisted it around. Didn't see it coming. They land. The boat pulls up. The music. The <sighs> boom, boom. But the black oh, screen right. in the end. Oh, my and then God. It's, it's not just when you see all the boats coming in. Yeah, 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 yeah. That, I think that's been one of my... That's the been one of my within the ship. The that's little, been one of my favourite endings of a film in so long. I remember <sighs> like getting up from the cinema and just being like, that was what fucking the fuck? incredible. Yeah. Where does that leave it? Honestly, you, you feel like you have to look around the cinema a little bit. Like, yeah, yeah, listen, yeah. Man, <laughs> that thing's ended Did, here, but yeah. what Did you all see that? Uh, yeah. But quick, quick, quick little thing as well. There's a theory... Because the film's made by Sony Pictures, right? Oh, you pointed this out. You pointed this out. <laughs> yeah, Venom. Sony Pictures. Yeah. There's a theory that this could be a prequel, a prequel to Venom, and it makes sense because Venom is like a black kind of liquid. It makes like so symbiote. much sense. Yeah. yeah, it makes so much sense. And this could be that. the beginning of the series. That's it a magical debunked. concept. It, it was, was debunked. It was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But it so just it's not yeah, Venom isn't for Mars. <laughs> Even just what do they know? It fits so well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even just the fact that it fits is cool. 
If you're um, up to date on Marvel, it's just a variant. It's in there. Don't worry. Yeah. Should we bring uh, the boys back? Yeah. Um, tell- be- before we do, uh, I mean, not that really. This spoils it. But my notes are: <laughs> if you shocked me like that with electricity, I'd probably want to fucking attack you as well. And then my other note is: that's what you get for breaking hey, quarantine. Yeah, so basically, guys, <laughs> what we're saying is: go watch life because you're fucking 100%. reprobates for not going watching it yet. I just messaged our chat going, you can come back now. (laughs) (laughs) I was trying to do it with symbols and I was just trying to point at them in like separate ways and just going, "Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, headphone on. And then we're like, Matty got it. Matty got it straight away. And Lund was trying to do a selfie assigned. Right. (laughs) You know, Smith, while while I've just been like, I can't hear you, I've just been looking at you all in here. Looking at you all in people. Uh, I just just figured out you remind me of right now. Don't say uh, it. Friday night, Friday night dinner, Martin. <laughs> it's fucking hot. <laughs> <laughs> yes, Marty. Um, I do have another fun fact. I mean, it's not really that. Okay, I, if it suits. Um, so I did see in an interview, which is such an amazing question. Uh, they asked Ryan Reynolds and Jake Gyllenhaal, how exciting was it to just wear socks to set? Because that's all they had to fucking wear. They didn't care, you know, just because they were in spacesuits throughout the whole film. Mm. All you got to be bothered about is your sock choice. That's it. There's another interview that went viral from the life press cycle between those two. Because those two are like good friends and like they were like fully taking the piss. I can't remember what it was, but I'm going to have to try and find it now. But I remember there being a certain moment between those two that went viral and I remember like they had like the life poster behind them and stuff. They've got a good dynamic them too. Yeah. Yeah, they're great. I do, got, I do like Ryan they've got, they've got that sort of energy that you can't comprehend when you bring them both together. Yeah. Which is Was weird because that... like the dynamic they have isn't actually shown a lot in the film because it's very serious. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I, I, what, I like that because, like, with, with Ryan Reynolds, that. you kind of know he's like a, a, a comedy fun guy. You know what you can. Whereas, yeah. and like, he plays that as well. Whereas Jake Gyllenhaal does quite often play a serious character. I don't think he's ever played a comedy role. But in real life, you're like, he could take, he could just have a fucking 100%. laugh. And I've got a bit of a fucking crush on him. I'm not going to lie, boys. I fucking love him. <laughs> oh, are you getting fucking mine? Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I mean, night, uh, what's he called? Nightcrawler. 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 Shout out silver screen I'm and seeing episode four. <laughs> and, legit, yeah, and if you actually and haven't seen that it. episode, please do yourself a favor because Ryan does a fucking solid job of this right now. Thanks, mate. Honestly, magic. Yeah, he's a sick actor. Well, Ever- the Everest as well. He does a great job in that. Everest. Oh, that's been on my list for a long time. Do you yeah. know you oh, need to watch man. that Velvet Buzzsaw as well if you haven't? Yeah. Do you know what? I was well hyped for that. Is that the, the and it, art gallery one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it was bollocks, yeah. but I still kind of <laughs> liked it. <laughs> no, no, Ryan's fully right there. <laughs> if you were to watch that, like, completely going out from looking in as a film, and you'd be like, at the end of it, you'd be like, oh, what the fuck have I just seen? However, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> if you like, appreciate Ryan, uh, Jake Gyllenhaal was the person. I remember, like, like, around him, you'd be like, I remember, like, I was well hyped for it. Uh, I like the Friday night off work got a pizza or you know went to watch this film and i remember i'd already seen the rotten tomatoes scores in the day giving it literally like i think it's like 19 percent. i was like yeah, oh God, yeah. they were not shit. Yeah. and i was like do you know what i didn't mind that but i still totally understand why it got 19 yeah. percent. Hey, yeah man, it makes perfect sense as to why it happened but yeah. at, the, at the same time it's it was it was yeah it was, it was fun right. fun so good watch. fun not fun fun moving, fun moving on moving on lun and matty Given the brief stuff you've heard, would you watch Life after what? Yeah, probably, said, probably because absolutely. of the act, the actors in it, and yeah, the sort of yeah, what you've explained about it's like sort of different compared to like all the other alien films. Because like I said, I, I'm not a big sci-fi person. I, I, I'm a sucker for an alien abduction film, obviously, which is a bit contradicting. But um, I might give this a go just because of the actors in it and the sort of premise as well. So. Yeah. And then go back and listen to what we said about the ending because we were passionate. <laughs> Very passionate. You will appreciate it. Oh, so good. <laughs> and for Lund, the cinematography, uh, as most space films are amazing. Uh, yeah, Chef's Kiss. Would you Did watch any... it, Lund? Oh, sorry. How dare you? <laughs> I get too excited. <laughs> Lund, you watch it, carry Lund? on. <laughs> yeah, absolutely, I'd watch it. Like, same point as my really. Like, um mainly to do with the cast 
mainly because the premise seems quite interesting to me that it's very again like i said it's very similar-ish to sunshine which is the danny boyle film um to yeah, watch definitely that. really good film players and you'll enjoy it go on ryan what were you saying Oh no! I was just chatting shit. I, I remember I bought um I bought a t-shirt once, and it was the alien poster, but it was like purposely wrong, and it said Alan rather than alien, and then the tagline just said was Alan spelled A L E N? No, it, oh, uh, that would have been even better. No, no, it was just Alan, and then it said in space, no one can hear you in space. <laughs> <laughs> oh damn! Okay, ratings between us three. Should we start with Alex as he chose the film? Yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll give it a, a, a nice uh, a nice four out of five. A very refreshing film to watch. I'd be very surprised if you were disappointed by it in any way, shape or form. Um, and I would love to hear, personally, where you think it goes after it ends. Because mm, there's it so leads, many theories there's you can have. A lot of interpretation. Yeah. And we were saying, uh, we were messaging one another, that's the fun thing about these kinds of films is, oh, now the whole fan base can be like, what if? Yeah. You know, yeah. It, it's so good. I uh, love that in film, like a, a, a what if ending of like, like some people need to be like, have everything wrapped up. And I'm like, no, I'm le- like, I mean, in some cases, yeah, sometimes. And in this case, for example, I love thinking this could be, there's so much more. It could happen, and I kind of don't ever want to know what will happen. See, I yeah. love. I'm, I'm, I'm a fanatic for storylines, whether they end nice and wrapped, nice and uh, done in a perfect wrapped up bow, or if they're left to your interpretation. I don't care how it's left ended. I love any and every yeah. story I'm given. It's the that execution one, of it, isn't it? That's it's not what, about that's what makes yeah. me happy. It's the journey along the way. I don't I've care told you about stories, it. just me and you, and you've been like, "Yeah, go on, what next?" Like, <laughs> I'm just like, "Yeah, all right." <laughs> because that, that, that's honestly yeah, that's the type of person yeah. that I am. I really, yeah. I, I, I want to know the that's details. Man for you. Yeah, <laughs> Smith man. Uh, <laughs> um, but yeah, fully. You, uh, Smith, uh, Smith and Lund. <laughs> that's me. Lund and Ashton, you two need to do yourself a favor and watch life. And please, at the yeah. end of it, we'll, we'll we'll sit down and discuss it and just see where it goes. Yeah, absolutely. But, like, yeah, honestly. Just to try and move things along a bit yeah, quicker. Um, very cool. Four out of five, done. I'm going to give it a 4.5. Um, oh! I very, very, very rarely give things a five. Dang it is, I do think it's a Dang fucking it. brilliant film, just in terms of how fucking <laughs> just exciting and fun it is. You know, it's no fucking, it, it, it's, oh, it's, it's just a fun fucking film. You know, I really like it. I'd recommend it to anyone. If you're even if you're not that into horror, because it's yeah, it is I did like I said when I watched it, I thought of it more of a sci-fi than a horror. Mm. Talking about it and kind of analyzing it a bit more, I realized there's so many horror elements in it. Um, it is kind of like a modern day alien, but with the process of like this could be real because obviously there is so much talk of yeah. there's so much talk of like aliens actually existing. And to be honest, if we do ever find aliens, they're more likely to be like these little fucking cells somewhere. Rather than like, you know, green, weird shaped oh, yeah, heads and, you know, sure. like Instagram filter shit. Um, I think so that for that side of it is really cool, is really exciting, it's a fun film. Actors are great. The ending, fucking love it. Like I said, don't think I've ever enjoyed an ending and kind of had that moment in the cinema where you kind of just turn to the person you're with, like, did you just see the same shit. thing I did? Because holy <laughs> fucking shit. Um, yeah, brilliant film, 4.5 nice so when i first watched this in my head since i was like ah 3.5 but i watched it again and i got so much more from it and appreciated it more that it easily puts it to a fall for me um i don't need to say anymore go watch it yeah nice the tagline for this film if you weren't aware is in scream no one can hear you space so just keep that in mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh fucking hell Right. Sponsored by Calvin Klein. <laughs> Our final <laughs> film. Final film. For this episode. And that is chosen by Matty Ashton. It's The Crow, which was released in 1994. Um, if you don't know, uh, it's about a man brutally murdered with his fiance. Uh, the man comes back to life as an undead avenger of his and his fiance's murder. Um, if you didn't know, this is a, a comic book ab- adaptation. 
I'm probably one of the first comic book horrors we got. Yeah. Um, I, um... It was released in 1994. Should we just pass this over to Matty whilst we all just leave and just let him speak for the next 75 <laughs> like hours? Because I'm yeah. pretty sure he That's will cover what... anything and everything. That we have That's what I'm thought. anticipating, oh, yeah. yeah. I'm fairly um, certain I can go to bed and get up for work in the morning. And, no, and I'll be like, so, me. yeah. <laughs> I'm just going to find the the film. <laughs> just I'm just going to go to the little girl's room whilst Matty describes the rest no of the worries, fucking mate. film. So I'm probably going to take a poo whilst we're at it. So you crack on, Matty. <laughs> Um, so you can, uh, oh, I've lost my thought because Smith said he's about to. So you said comic book shit. adaptation. Yeah, you, you yeah. had Blade uh, yeah. uh, as well in the 90s. So they were the two like comic book which went for like a, you know, rated 15 to us. But so, so both rated. of them are sort of like, because I've always thought of the crow when you think about it and also Blade, they have the horror aesthetic. But they're very much also like they cross the boundaries into that action and thriller as well. Yeah. At the same uh, time. It's is there a comic book that doesn't do the action stuff? Yeah, well, yeah, you exactly. Know. Yeah. Unless so, John Carpenter's comics probably do. Mm. Now. Um, but not that I know of. Not that I've read myself. Uh, no. but, but this film's considered one of the cursed films. Uh not if you didn't know, uh, Brandon Lee, the gentleman that plays Eric Draven, died on set. But not just that being part of the cursed film title. Uh, a lot of accidents happened on set. I think you had a storm around the time it was being filmed. Um, what else? Someone drove a truck through the entire set. Like, so there's this, a yeah. bunch of... This was filmed around, I think, around in Wilmington, uh, uh, in in parts as well, all around that sort of like sort of area where Halloween and all its films like a studio there. Yeah, they do a lot of it. Um, yeah, I, I, I want to hear what you guys thought of it first, to be honest with you, before I go like fucking ranting on for it. I only watched it quite recently as well. Um, I did like it. I did question why it gets put in horror category so much because it did feel like a bit of a. I think I was chatting to you guys about it. I think I used the line, it's just like an action movie, but aimed more at goth kids. <laughs> um, it was very cool. Like It's quite a simple plot. And that's what I quite like about a lot of like 90s films, that it's simple, but the aesthetic is what kind of pulls you in. Um, you know, it's, it's, it's a proper... It's very like Tim Burton-esque. Yeah, like it is a proper, too, like, is a proper vibe. Um, and yeah, it it was cool. I didn't quite love it because i think maybe um because like i said because i kind of went in thinking it's going to be like this kind of classic horror i was kind of thinking it's going to be alongside you know scream halloween you know friday 13th like in that because it does kind of always get put in that in those Mm. kind of bundles but like i said to me it felt way more like an action film so it felt like more like like growing up my cousin loved martial arts movies and i hated them and it did feel like that but because it was aimed more in a bit of a like I said a bit of a gothy aesthetic I was kind of into it um but yeah good film just I do feel because more of an action than horror um it it is it is weird like like it sort of crosses those boundaries like I said it isn't very like you couldn't put it next to probably like scream in terms of like horror or like Halloween like in in, of the in-depth horror because there's no there's not really much horror element to it like there's nothing very scary about it apart from the fact it's been brought yeah. back from the dead it's just um, quite dark isn't it it's kind of it's almost yeah. like joker like you know you didn't joker's not like a horror film uh anyone was watching it but it still had those dark elements to it yeah maybe it's you know 20 30 years i can't even think of the time my mind's frazzled 25 years before i think maybe um i'd say joker's films. gory I kind of can't remember a lot of Joker, to be honest. Like, I didn't rate it yeah. as highly as everyone else. No, um, I think, I, think right I, I just mean more on like the audience it attracts. Like mm. it could pull in anyone. I think like you know, I, I don't know what the what the uh, release was like in the nineties. What kind of crowd it attracted, but um, yeah, it did well. Um, but like, what was I going to say? Jesus, why am I doing this? As you can tell, we're coming to the end. I'm like, yeah, mate, oh. I'm so tired. <laughs> Um, <laughs> so it was the number one box office when it got released uh, the comics are all black and white so that's why you've got like this desaturated 
aesthetic to the actual film. Um, I think it suits a nice weird middle ground between action and horror. It, it does. It's Definitely, hard to yeah. put it in. Definitely one. more towards action, but it has horror elements. I yeah. See. Mm-hmm. It, it's the look. I mean. Were there two? Yeah. Uh, it, I, yeah. I feel like I read this a couple of a, a couple of months ago. Well, I don't know when it was. It was a, it was a time before this. Uh, is it, was there two different versions of this film created or something? No, they, you've just got the one, but um, they, they, there are sequels. There are sequels, yeah. and the Crow storyline itself. So I'm a bit of a nerd, so I've got the comic, all the comics as well. So each one of the comics, each run of the comics, the basically the Crow brings people back to life to avenge. It's whatever happened people, to him before it? yeah so in this case you've got eric draven and then in the other i think in the other movies and also in the other comics it's different people so like one of the comics uh more recent ones um uh, was was to do with this kid who's uh like his girlfriend got run over um and he got run over also or got killed um right. out, outside near the vatican and he comes back back to life to sort of avenge avenge them. And there's one based one called Skin in the Wolves that's sort of based in um like the uh, thingy sort of you know, like you know like Germany and around the whole like uh, death camps and all that sort of thing. Oh, okay. um, so that's what that's basically what the crow is. They bring people back to life to avenge uh, whatever happened in the previous life. Uh, I'll give you my fun fact early for this one. The creator of the crow. Uh, wrote this as sort of a cathartic experience after losing his fiance in a car crash. Okay, right. So that is the like you know, um motivator behind it and the reason that story came about. <coughs> I think this one's got an amazing soundtrack. Yep. Um you got Tony so a, Todd a fun fact who uh, makes uh, before you go into that with go the on. soundtrack. So apparently uh, the influence for the crow as well was a song called The Hanging Garden by the Cure. <laughs> So the fact that they managed to get the cure back yeah, to do a the... song for the film is Damn, fucking I didn't know that. Yeah, I love oh, that. That's cool. Touché. Yeah, you've got Tony Todd making an appearance in this film. So uh-huh. fan of horror, there's your little horror nods. There's, um, little, there's a little walking for you there. Another little fun fact. Uh, considered for the role of Eric Draven were also Johnny Depp, Christian Slater and River Phoenix. Well, Brandon Lee got the role because he was selling it a lot more uh, physically. You know, though, on topic of that, I feel like it, you said Johnny Depp was the first one. Yeah. I feel like I could see Johnny Depp in that role strangely. 100%. You could sort of picture him, yeah. Yeah. But this not is like, the, I think, go on, Swift. Go on. I was going to say, not the other two, but Johnny yeah. Depp. Like, I don't know why, for some strange reason, since you've mentioned his name, my brain's just sort of gone, yo, I'm <laughs> Uh, You're just playing out the crow in your head, but with Johnny Depp with parts of the Caribbean <laughs> music in the background. Yeah, yeah. He probably plays guitar, <laughs> plays guitar as well, so he would have probably could sense. have pulled it yeah. off. Yeah. Um, did, just on topic of a uh, uh, fact, there, uh, uh, Matty probably knows this as well. Uh, I was reading up on um, you know, the dude who um, he wasn't at fault for for actually killing Brandon Lee, but the, the yeah. actor who did it didn't he like, stopped like, acting like, for? It? Yeah, uh, Michael Masti, I've got his name down. Yeah, that's the one. Yeah, yeah. then he uh, he stopped acting for quite a while because he was actually quite traumatized by the whole situation, despite the fact that obviously, that obviously yeah. it wasn't his fault. Yeah, uh, I've, I've literally just read here now, uh, it, it's just put, um, his next film after that was a, a like a tiny role in the film Seven, uh, and up until his death in 2016, he had never actually watched the film. Yeah, he never got over it. Like, it's no, quite sad that. Totally yeah. understand that. Really upsetting, realistically, yeah. isn't it? Like going into his death, like I know he particularly had PTSD after it. And I don't think he spoke about it a lot, kind of. No. Like. Um, but the, the death was due to a, a firearm uh, had a dummy cartridge lodged in the barrel, mm. and they did have a firearms expert uh, on the film. But he went home early that day. And he was on scene for it. And that's, you know, fucked up. these like things that get overlooked led to his death. And he did get shot in the stomach, rushed to hospital, had a six hour surgery, uh, needed six pints of blood. Um, the bullet was lodged in his spine and went through an artery. Um, and Brandon Lee died at the age of 28 on the March the 31st. 
Um, there are some conspiracy theories you'll hear about. Um, yeah, I've read a few. But... His dad and the, the, uh, Bru- yeah. obviously being the son of Bruce Lee. Um, there's conspiracy theories thinking it's the triads and a, a weird coincidence because I, I don't think there's any substance to these conspiracy theories. There is a Bruce Lee film of him being an actor in the film <clears throat> and um, a, another member shoots him on set. Oh, which just mirrors the death of his son later on, which is That's horrifying. Scary. Yeah. Um, yeah, yeah. So the scene, the scene where, what he, where he actually got shot when they were doing it, because I know like, they, they basically shot the film mostly back to front. Um, so they got like the majority of it done. It was more of like the beginning the flashback, scenes. Flashback, isn't it? That, that was yeah. going to be a question I was actually going to ask you, Matty. Is, is is how far did they get into production before that actually happened, and then they finished the film? So yeah, please answer. So, yeah. so, so it's like like I think it was halfway or maybe more than halfway. And then there was some scenes such as uh, you know you know the one where he's um, standing in the window, the big circle window. There's a, there's a, the storm there's going after the, the background. Yeah, 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 and he does the flip, so that's that's not him. And there were some bits where they sort of like CGI'd his face and that. Um, but the bit where he actually did get shot, um, that sort of section is still in the film, but they changed it around. So it's where he has the flashbacks, as you said, Pearson, and he is uh, going back to when he came into the house to find like that gang in the sort of like um, like raping his fucking fiance. Brutus yeah. Fault, this film. Yeah, yeah. Uh, doing all that sort of shit. And he walks in to find all this happening. And at that's that point in the that's when he got shot on that scene. No, Obviously, no. they changed it for that. Um and the he ends footage up was like, destroyed after that. the police yeah. uh, viewed it. Because a lot of people will be like, there's a deleted scene and stuff <laughs> like that. Because there's this sort of he was becoming a, a big Hollywood star, really. Brandon Lee he had a few small roles before it, but this was his Big break through that role. Yeah, wasn't it? like tabloids were writing about him before the film was released and stuff. Um, yeah. So, um, yeah. The, so the whole film itself, like I said, it's got like a big like like Tim Burton esque like setting to it, which is very true to the comics. But be, but it was originally supposed to be filmed in black and white as well. Oh really? I yeah. Didn't the, know the, that. Yeah. So the director wanted it in black and white to sort of stay true to that, but the uh, the actual picture company were like, no, uh, yeah. people are not probably going to watch it as much. So we've got to put some colours to it. So that's why he went for that sort of like them sort of Timber Burton esque like vibes. Is very bleak. Look. Yeah, desaturated yeah. colour to it. Yeah. I like it. I think it it suits the style it of the. Really adds to like an 100%. element to the film. I think it does remind you of like Tim Burton's Gotham. If you think yeah, about like the 80s Batman yeah. films. That's what you think of. Yeah. But uh, Bruce, sorry, Bruce Lee, Brandon Lee's like acting in this and his dedication to the role is what fucking just sells it even more for me. And um, apparently like he, um, he he slept at home in his makeup because uh, when he got the makeup applied to his face, he wasn't fully happy with it. So they decided he would go home with the makeup on, sleep in it, and then he'd come to set with that makeup and it'd be sort of like rubbed off a little bit and look, look a bit like... Like worn through, and that's like how worn, yeah. the film, gritty yeah. and stuff. Yeah, you've also got Ernie Hudson in this, which like plays What's like an amazing to... uh, part in this mm. as the the cop helping Eric Draven out. Mm. Such uh, a cool name, Eric Draven. It is, isn't it? It's a fucking gothic name, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. it's almost vampiric, Draven. isn't it? It's yeah, yeah. Eric Draven. Almost feels like it has a vampire attached to it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. I think maybe because it's got the like, maybe because it's got literally the word Raven in it, which sounds very Ed. Well, was he Edgar Allan Poe? Mm. Raven. Well, aren't the, 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 the birds the used the ravens and not actual crows as well? Yeah. Oh, I don't know about yeah. birds. The very, yeah, because they're very like similar, aren't they? Yeah. Um, also, the birds I know are the ones that have got very low self esteem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I was no. gonna say, I was gonna say, Smith, being from the West Country, we should know uh, the Wurzel's Blackbird song, the Blackbird, I'll have eat. We're not allowed to sing it out in public, mate, because people start to fucking shout at us. We're not Wait, hang on, it. what is is it? Hang on, is there another meaning to the song that I don't know? Because I generally just thought it's about a bird. No, 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 just genuinely, okay. we're just. Not, we're just oh. I thought yeah. I was gonna get the it. West Country isn't allowed to sing it other than the West Country mate. Just the same as uh, I got a brand new combine officer. We're not allowed to do it. I, I mean, I hate the Wurzels anyway. Um, 
I also hate Oasis, which might be a problem when I move up to Manchester. But what well, that's that's a conversation. Only for Mancunians, mate. Um, <laughs> I've got one fun fact, actually. One more thing oh, well, uh, that another actor who's in this film, the guy who plays T Bird, he's the guy who's always like, fire it up, fire it up, <laughs> all the way through it. Yeah. He's the guy who plays Luther in the Warriors, the main um, antagonist. You know, oh, the uh, right. Warriors. Oh. Yeah, the guy who plays him. Well, there you go. That's cool. The more you know. For my fun fact is for any wrestling fans, this obviously inspired uh, Sting. I don't remember which one Sting is. It basically you're, looks like basically it looks like the crow. He, he had like a uh, long a blonde singer. hair at first, with like, Ding. you know, popping pink, and then he went through this change. Oh um, uh, yeah. And Pardon me, completely off topic, but very a quick mini like, question. Quick mini driven. question, just out of curiosity: Who was your favorite wrestler growing up? Ooh, Mine was Triple um, H. Okay. I think Kane. Mm-hmm. Love. I think The Rock, yeah. Jason. Hardy Boys. Ray Mysterio, mate. It oh. was all <laughs> Ray Mysterio. Nice. Anyways, let's move on. <coughs> I was just genuinely intrigued. <laughs> I like that um, we all had an answer, though. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was cool. <laughs> the youth came through. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so my, my favourite thing about this movie is because it's not your typical horror and it follows sort of like like a storyline for justice and i think that like gives it a whole different vibe compared to all the other like horror like films you see which i, I can see why it sort of teepers on the edge of a, of a like a thriller or an action movie um but yeah and it has it just has like the perfect resolve to it and i think the whole meaning behind the film is fucking brilliant it's also so. got this like gothic romance to it. Uh, yes. The way you get from like Bram Stoker, which I didn't appreciate until after we spoke about it. Yeah. Um, that old like, school romance. Yeah. And you've got like uh, this amazing relationship. Is it Sally? The Shelley. little girl? Uh, Shelley. Sorry, sorry, Sally. Yeah. I think. Is it Sally? No, I think no, Shelly sounds like. right. No, mm-hmm. Shelly's is. Uh... Sally, Shelly. Sarah, 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 what the fuck are we on about? Sarah, what the fuck are we on about? We, we don't know yeah. this film, apparently. Uh, oh, Matt, you've like... literally, you have the script. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I know. Fucking my mind went blind. There's so many people. Yeah, he scribbled a name out already to change it to <laughs> Sally. Look, look yeah. at this cunt. So th- that's a new thing. Matty, do you want to talk about that? Or do you want to save that? it? What's that? What do you mean? Oh, the script. What do you mean, what's that? You have a production used script for this film. I'll fucking. I'll... Grab it there quick if you want to talk. I'll just show you how that's going. When just whilst he's doing that, like, yeah, you mentioned about the romance. I kind of liked that. Like, there is like a kind of a, a, it's almost like an alternative romance movie. Like, I, my favorite film in the world is True Romance. And that's got the same kind of level where it's like, it is a romance film. But every time I'm like talking to people about it and they're like, oh, I hate romance films, I'm like, nah, it's not what you think. You need to appreciate romance. This isn't, this isn't. This I isn't think... Hugh Grant bumbling over some fucking girl and shit. You know, this is fucking oh, sick. Yeah. And it proper gets you feeling like, yeah, romance is cool. <laughs> well, do you know, as a, is a, is a deep one, it makes you question love, doesn't it, a little bit? You know, when you see films like that and you sort of go, oh, Hugh Grant's just fucking, ooh, I used to love this woman once and I will hold signs up. Oh, <laughs> fuck off. Yeah, um, 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 just to say... <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, terribly not. Where, oh. where, where have you got these people? If I can, you know, that, that's legit romance. I mean, I have commitment issues, so I know I don't know what romance is. <laughs> I can't even spell it, mate. So don't even worry about that. We're, <laughs> we're in the day and age of romance. Yeah. So we, we don't need to worry about that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, anyway, so, my... So I'm, I want to go to the one page. Because oh, romance, I know, yeah, I wouldn't say... Like, uh, I'm surprised you, my... you're holding it up, but... That's yeah. my favourite thing I've heard today. Don't, don't <laughs> drop it. There you don't crease so, the pages. No, it's spit it's on it. December the 4th, 1992, obviously. So the system of production not long after that. And then, yeah, it's got all the extra bits in it. Like uh, there was a character called the Skull Cowboy in the comics, which they had for this. And they actually... I think they filmed a few scenes uh, that were deleted and um, it was portrayed by actor Michael Berryman. He, if you, you'll know him from uh, The Hills of Eyes, he's, the, uh, he's this yeah. guy in The Hills of Eyes. I don't know if you can see that. You know what I mean? I know who you mean. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's loaded yeah. now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah and so. the, you see like the actual costume design if you Google it and it looks yeah. incredible, doesn't it? 
So who that that oh, script that you've got, like whose copy was that? So the, it was just a production news one, so it would have been on set. So I don't know if anyone in particular had it or or whatever. But um, is it not it's fucking? Not does not make you feel weird that that thing's older than you? Yeah, it's weird as fucking. <laughs> it. I just feel, I just like find that. it weird. It's been in the same place as them. That's why it's more fucking weird. Yeah, but yeah. I have um, a weird question about it. What does what? it smell like? <laughs> does it have a weird? Does that have like a smell like... to it? What does it smell What a question! It smells like it's like. Like to completely get why you've Well, because like it's like this is like a thirty year old item he's got. This it thing has like been success? around a long time. Like, does it? I can't, all I can explain it is it literally just smells like an old book. No, yeah, yeah, yeah. You smell to it, and yeah, you can sort yeah, of yeah. see like the front of it, like the front cut. I don't know if it's coming through properly because the bright light, but it's very, it's got very like tinted, like brownie bits at the front of it, and that. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's a cool thing to have, man. Paper that's worn but not been fully flicked through. That's what I mean. I mean. It's been yeah. it's no been looked after. It's been I'm looked saying. after, but it's thirty years old. You know, or, mm. well, yeah. not, not quite thirty, but you know, closer Just, to thirty yeah. than anything else. Yeah. I'm nearly thirty years old, and I don't even look look, look as looked after as that does. So do you know what I mean? That says it all, doesn't it? Yeah. How old are you, Smith? And don't don't. We'll not talk about. Twenty eight. Twenty seven. Twenty six. Mate, I'm twenty eight. So fuck <laughs> you. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, on paper, I'm 26, but look at me. I look fucking haggard. I look like I've had an uphill paper round with one wheel and my stabilizers broke me. Do you know what I mean? I'm not looking in a good place. Mate, the way your go brain works, here. the way your brain works here. blows my mind. How you just <laughs> quickly come out of all these things. Oh, what, in terms of descriptions? Yeah, it's just mad, man. Right, <laughs> I'm shattered. Should we get to ratings? Yeah. Yes, we absolutely should. Well, I'm just going to throw mine right out there and now. I'm going to give this a nice, healthy 4.5 out of 5 because The Crow is legit one of the best films you'll probably ever see. Um, I I do think it will stand the test of time for a hell of a long time. Uh, it will take a lot of films to either be like sort of created in its sort of wake or to replicate it, to knock it off its pedestal. So 4.5 yeah. out of part 5 is where I'll comfortably sit for this one. Well, Jason Momoa was supposed to be coming to oh, play yeah, this, and I was a bit on the fucking edge of it. Oh, that that like, if they're doing as Eric what Draven, hell? it'd be like, fuck's sake. That's part of the curse, is uh, yeah. he dropped out before filming began, and so did the director because of creative differences. Mm. Um, oh, so they're not making a remake they're not of making Jason it now. Good. Um, I don't think he'd be a good crow at all. There's no he's too, way he's too bulky. And, yeah, but man. that's the thing yeah. about the crow. This isn't a remake of Eric Draven, as far as I was. Uh, it's it another could crow. Have been a different character. Yeah, it could have been. Yeah, yeah but yeah. still, I think just his look just doesn't fit that aesthetic. You yeah, know, he's it's very great on paper. If you think, but, if you think no. a look doesn't fit an aesthetic, watch that sequel because that doesn't suit it either. <laughs> like the look of the, you know, not to. What's it? Is it the crow? Um, just the crow too? Yeah, electric it's got boogaloo. A name. It's you've got, got like City of, uh, I think it's like City of Angels. Oh, City of Angels. Yeah. I'm gonna... It's just the look of the, the main uh, character for me that does something where I'm like, ooh. You quite. could tell they were still trying to go for that look of the first film at the same time, weren't they? Like they, yeah. they wanted that guy to solve it. The guy from American similar. Pie plays like the crow in the sequel, or am I just making a little... I have I have no look. idea. Well, Which I guy from American you. Pie? You've got me intrigued. Oh, it's not like fucking uh, shitbreak or anything, is it? No, I don't think. No, I don't, I don't think not, they're an American Pie. I'm no. googling it now. He's not an American Pie. So I can tell you, um, after Brandon Lee's death, the studio did want to drop out and not put the film Release out, the film, yeah. and Miramax stepped in and uh, you know put eight million towards. <laughs> The rest of the film being shot, so you've you've they've got this weird like it's dynamic. A split with there because I can appreciate why you wouldn't want to continue that because hundred percent because but they also didn't you know how do I put this in the promotions and stuff they didn't push like Brandon Lee you know died mm. on this film or anything like that they never used it again that's good and they had they the didn't, they didn't. i'm glad that they didn't yeah, yeah oh, not 100%. capitalize on a tragic incident and, um, they got the blessing from the family and his fiance before carrying on am i right right yeah. yeah i'm yeah, glad they did. did like i mean uh, it's it, an amazing if, film yeah you if have it, to pay tribute though 
I think yeah, I think it pays tribute, and I gotta be honest, like I mean, I'm not an actor, but if I ever was an actor and I died on set and I'd done most of the film, I'd want people to see the fucking work I put in and mm-hmm. you know, fucking 100%. died for, 100%. you know. But and that's, yeah. I mean, it sounds like they did it quite respectfully as well. If they didn't kind of push yeah, it as like I, I the last that. film with Brandon Lee, he yeah. died for this movie. You've got to see it. Buy yeah. tickets now. Yeah, yeah. But you know. In this day and age, it could have been portrayed that way. So they fucking would do it in this day and age, yeah. mate. Yeah. Well, that's what they did with Heath, wouldn't it? Oh, of course he did. Uh, yeah, with uh, the Dark Knight. But he, no, after that, he, he did a film that he only got did half of. Uh, um, I remember this. Yeah, I can't remember the name of it. Crash film, from what I remember, but like they kind of they hooked this whole, the whole thing. It was kind of oh this is his last film. yeah yeah they really sold it on that oh but so they really troped it up I with think, that sort of element I think it's because though the Dark Knight is clearly going to be his last role he'll be remembered for because he was fucking brilliant yeah. and then they're like oh shit we've got this one more film left to release probably not going to do that well let's really push it on this side of things and right. and marketing okay. are like you've got an opportunity here yeah yeah, yeah. bullshit mate fucking disgusting um. So whose rating did we just get? We got yours, Smith. Yeah, you took my 4.5 out of 5 on there. I will happily recommend that to anyone. Like to Please do yourself a favour and watch it. I'll throw mine in the ring. Um, I, again, checked my letterbox because I only watched this a few months ago. Uh, I gave it a 3.5. Did really enjoy it. As I said earlier, didn't feel like it was much horror, more action for goths. But do you know what? That's fucking sick. Goths. That's that's fucking sick. That uh, you know the the alternative kids back in the nineties got this film to really fucking vibe off. Because I think even South Park take the piss that like when that came out, everyone went to the Halloween parties dressed as the crow. Yeah, you know, they did. Um, yeah. you know, I can totally understand why it's such a <laughs> cultural phenomenon. Maybe if I watched it back in the day as well. And if I was like kind of a bit of a, I mean, you know, I was a bit of a young excluded kid in my time, but if I was at that age at the time it came out, maybe I would have loved it. Um, watching it recently probably didn't get the appreciation it would have got back in the day, but yeah, still a good film. 3.5. I'm quite keen to watch it again as well, you know. I'd yeah. love that for the tagline. I imagine like action for goths. Action, action movie for, for goths. goths. Get into uh, marketing now. For, <laughs> for goths. <laughs> Right, I'll throw a bunch of this. Um, so I'm going to give this a four out of five. Thanks. As I do honestly think it is a classic. It is cinematography, as you know, I'm a sucker for good cinematography. Um, and just the overall aesthetic. It, like the whole thing that he kind of, he would blend perfectly with Tim Burton's like Batman universe that from like the 90s and 80s. Um, it's an amazing film. I'm going to give it a five. But well, that's our yeah, first I, five uh, of the fucking thing. I'm probably biased because I was brought up watching this film. So, like, going back to what Ryan said, I feel like the time you watch it definitely factors in. But, like, yeah, fucking love this film. Soundtrack's amazing. I feel it's one of the bonding things me and Matty have. We always talk about The Crow and fucking listening to him. So yeah, they yes, feel like do. they go together quite well. Mm-hmm. And you got um, you goffs as well you on the fucking goffs. <laughs> What'd you say, mate? In nine Bloody Grievous soundtrack. Yep, Nine Inch Nails on the oh fucking Stone Temple, Stone Temple Pilots as well. I think are on the soundtrack's amazing. Yeah. You should just listen. hang on. Sorry, just to jump in, I'm looking at the cast for the Crow City of Angels. Fucking Chino Marino from Deftones. What? Really? Oh shit! What? Iggy Pop on the... The oh yeah, shit! I forgot Iggy Pop was in it. Dude, what? I've only yeah. ever watched that one like once, you know. I, can't even, watch I don't even know what clips. Iggy Pop looks like nowadays, mate. I swear oh, he God. looks he looks like a fucking handbag that's been left <laughs> out in the sun. Mate, talk about you know, if, if ever you could watch a human melt and still exist, like Pop, he's drippy. Yeah. Mate, I might watch this just because fucking Chino's in it. Oh, like, dude. Deftones are the fucking one of the greatest yeah. bands of all time. They are. If the Chino, kids. if they Chino dived it. into a bit of acting in the nineties, I've got to see it. <laughs> yeah, I'm with you though. Even if it's just it. for like multiple seconds. Oh, hang on, no, 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 hang on. Right, 
th- sorry, he didn't. Oh, he didn't it act. is Deftones in Death there. Deftones themselves are in the fucking film. There must be like a bit in a gig or something, and yeah. Deftones are fucking there. I've got to see it. That's it. That's what you got. All right, the Crow Two is on my list just for Deftones. Right, Matty. But you know what mine's gonna be. It's gonna be the same as you. The five again. I just love the film. All the five. Honest to God. The legacy of for Brandon Lee is is another reason why it shouldn't be remade. The fact that this was his last film, it was one, it was obviously going to be his biggest film. The amount he put into the role itself, um, yeah, it's just fucking one of my favourite films. And I'm a bit of a goth on the sly, so it pleases me in the goth. On the sly, look at the fucking sly. state here. Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sly. I'm be yeah. sly. Right. Shut up. That concludes the seven films that took longer than I was expecting, boys. I won't lie. Yeah, um, I, um, have we reached the three hour mark? Or? We, I think we, so, uh, but there's some edits in there. I gotta, yeah, do. yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, there's toilet breaks, there's beer breaks, there's yeah. Smith being Smith breaks. We, we got a lot, don't worry. Um, but how do we all feel after episode one? Magic, I am, mate. If I were to describe time. myself Love in a word, I'd of... say I'm cosmic. Yeah. Cosmic. I am tired. Oh, <laughs> Only uh, another 24 to go. <laughs> let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it's been good. Have we got have you got the list for uh week two? Yeah, I go think. on. Is it, we, uh... Yeah, reveal week two. Yeah, yeah, because then because then a bit what, of hype. Kind of what I do on the silver screen, like it gives people time to uh if they want to, they can check Visit. out the films. And... Yeah, yeah. Ryan um, fucking knows what he's doing, dude. you know. Doing this shit better than me. Let's go. Yeah, Ryan, have you got a book that I can take a leaf out of? (laughs) (laughs) I'm so glad that what you said before, by the way, Alex, I like the way you describe things. Oh, mate, it's it's amazing. No, because it doesn't make sense. But when I say it out loud, it makes the perfect sense. Because in my brain, it just sort of goes, and then I just sort of say words and I go, that'll work. Doing it right now, Smith. You're doing it right now. Smith. (laughs) Love you. Man. Shut up. Shut your fucking mouth. Right. So the next films we've got coming up on episode two are The Collector, The Ritual, yeah. cool. Prom Night, released in 1980, New Nightmare, Prince of Darkness, Halloween H20, and Fright Night. Can we call that Halloween H2O, I mean? please? Thank you. Hey, what the fuck is Prince of Darkness? That John is Carpenter. a John Carpenter film with Alice Cooper. Oh. Con Carpenter. Oh, Alice cool. Cooper plays a right. homeless guy. Nice. Yeah. Never heard of it. So I'm excited yeah, for that. Yeah, it's one of them. Me and Matty went to watch John Carpenter live. You did. This amazing setup with like a screen behind it. They play mm. the themes and there'd be projections in the background. And there was this one scene that like just stood out to me. And it was some fucking creepy little girls because they scare the fuck out of me. And I remember just Ugh. bugging Matty being like, what is that film? What is it, Matty? Uh, it's Prince of Darkness, so I've nice. got to watch it as well. I'm cool. excited about that. And right. From the... Well then, gonna... boys. So, sorry, sorry, Ryan. Sorry to interrupt you. If we're, if we're, if we're going to leave this on a high note, I'd recommend that you watch every film that we have recommended to you here today. Ooh. We haven't recommended oh. them. Just watch them anyway, because fuck you. I mean, and secondly, don't want. <laughs> don't watch Hatchet. <laughs> <laughs> it's coming back, in it? Fuck. <laughs> never, never spend your time watching Hatchet. That's my only recommendation. <laughs> nice. There we All go. Right, so, if you made it to the end, thank you. I'm going to let everyone get off and get some rest. Yes, I'll see you boys next week. I'm going to carry on drinking, so I'll see you guys next <laughs> week. <laughs> right. Thank you very much for listening. Bye. Bye. Bye.